War. War never changes. Since the dawn of humankind, when our ancestors first discovered the killing power of rock and bone, blood has been spilled in the name of everything from God to justice to simple psychotic rage. In the year 2077, after millennia of armed conflict, the destructive nature of man could sustain itself no longer. The world was plunged into an abyss of nuclear fire and radiation. But it was not, as some had predicted, the end of the world. Instead, the apocalypse was simply the prologue to another bloody chapter of human history. For man had succeeded in destroying the world. But war, war never changes. In the early days, thousands were spared the horrors of the Holocaust by taking refuge in enormous underground shelters known as vaults. But when they emerged, they had only the hell of the wastes to greet them. All except those in Vault 101. For on that fateful day, when fire rained from the sky, the giant steel door of Vault 101 slid closed and never reopened. It was here you were born. It is here you will die. Because in Vault 101, no one ever enters, and no one ever leaves. Let's see, are you a boy or a girl? It's a boy. A boy. We've got a son, Catherine. A beautiful, healthy baby boy. Oh, oh James. We did it. A son. A beautiful son. You've got a bright future ahead of you, son. I'm sure of it. Look at you. Look at you. Hi there. I'm your daddy, little guy. Daddy. You're going to need a name, aren't you? Your mother and I have been talking. What do you think about... That's a good name, don't you think? Fits you perfectly. Looks like they've finished the gene projection. Let's see what you'll look like when you're all grown up. You're going to look a lot like your dad. See that, Catherine? Oh, oh, very strapping. <laughs> it's a big world out there, son, full of all sorts of people. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? J You're James? just a... Catherine? James? Catherine! She's in Something's cardiac arrest. Start compression. Things. Get the baby out of here. Move, move! One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Come on. Hang on, Catherine. Hang on. It's you and me. Okay? Don't you one day. We need a doctor, not a deadbeat. This one's on the house. Fail to meet my expectations. Now, look straight into the light now. James and his cheery chatter. Decorations. Your future is right. Boys in this place will feel Come on, just like home. Home. Come on. Walk to Daddy. Baba. There you go. My goodness. Just a year old and already walking like a pro. Your mother would have been so proud. Listen, kiddo. I know you don't like it when Daddy leaves you alone, but I need you to take care of yourself for a minute. You just stay here while Daddy runs to his office. You'll be okay, pal. I'll be back in a bit.
Dede. <laughs> you are quite the little explorer, aren't you? Serves me right for trying to pin you in. Come on over here. I want to show you something. See that? It was your mother's favorite passage. It's from the Bible. Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. She always loved that. All right, come on. Let's go see if your little friend Amada wants to play. The experiment to prepare. We prepare. Surprise! 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 Stanley, you turned the lights on too fast. Each you day blinded day the poor kid. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Can you believe it? He is growing up so fast. Happy birthday, pal. I can't believe you're already ten. I'm so proud of you. If only you Congratulations, mother... young man. I don't have to tell you how special this day is, do I? Down here in Vault 101, when you turn 10, well, you're ready to take on your first official Vault responsibilities. So here you are. As Overseer, I hereby present to you your very own Pip-Boy 3000. Get used to it. You'll be getting your first work assignment tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy your party. You're only 10 once, so have fun. Oh man, you got a pit boy. I wish I... Happy birthday! We really surprised you, didn't we? <laughs> Your dad was afraid you were on to us. But I told him not to worry. You're so easy to fool. You're welcome. But really, your dad did most of it. I just help with the decorations and stuff. Hey, I bet you can't guess what I got you for your birthday. Go on, guess! Gross! I didn't think you even liked girls. And you know what I mean, before you say something rude about me. I guess maybe I should give this to someone else. Someone who likes Grognak the Barbarian better than me and Christine. The question is, how could you tell the difference? <laughs> I was ten. Enjoying yourself? Enjoying yourself. Attention, everyone. It's nice time party. to cut the cake. Hey, happy birthday. Oh, no. I am mortified about the cake mishap. Simply mortified. I didn't bring you a present, if that's what you're wondering. Nice pip. Come on, Wally. What is that? You always have good one ideas. Three thousand. Enjoying yeah, yourself? I got Daddy, one. Daddy, I told the you mat. not... Are you having a nice party? Ten years old. My, my, my. Seems like only yesterday that your daddy came. Goodness, listen to me ramble. You're waiting for your present, aren't you? Such a nice, polite young man you are. Don't ever lose your gift to speaking your mind so directly. We could use more of that down here. Here you go. A nice, sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. And it's all for you. You're the birthday boy. No sharing required today. To act all Super official. cool, right? I know you were joking, Jeez, Wally, but I'm not that... sure. You're the game. You are me. No way. Nonsense. I'm hungry, and that stupid robot destroyed the cake. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. What? Dang, I love those sweet rolls old lady Palmer makes. You, you stay out of my way, you got it? 
people so, always what do you think we should call our guest? Speeches. It's gotta be total Besides, killer. Besides, that friend of yours could hey, use a reminder that life world. is not all Get it? fun and games. Who wants to go around all day being called a uh, fool? supposed so to be a... How do you like that, Pip-Boy, son? Fit all right and everything? As a matter of fact, I did. I'm glad you like it. Some may think the A-Series is a bit basic, but I've always preferred them for their reliability. Don't mention it. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. Happy birthday! Not much, but I hope you like it. You really are you as know, dumb as you fun? look. You should... You guys can do better than that. We need a good name. How's it going, Pep? What Butch want? I thought you were in trouble there for a second. Wow, you're so tough. You'll have to teach me how to do that sometime. He's not worth worrying about anyway. Most likely to end up a trash burner, right? How about Hell's Overseers? Yeah, I like that. Thanks for well, coming, Sam. Well, at least it doesn't have your name I know name you were busy somewhere. with the water purifier. Which makes purifier. it better than any of your other Everything's ideas. fine, I hope. Oh, sure, Just nothing to worry about. Me and Andy party. got her all for Jonas? Jonas? Last night. Good as new. Hey, Doc. I wasn't we're all worried. set down here. You can fix anything, Thanks. right? Thanks. I'll send him right down. I'm... Hey, that was Jonas on the intercom. He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs on the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind if you slip out for a few minutes. Glad you can make it. Happy birthday, dearie. My goodness, I hope I didn't miss the party. They sure did. My, my. Ten years old already? Why, I can remember helping your dad change your diapers. And now look at you, a great big grown-up ten-year-old with your very own Pip-Boy. Since this was such a special occasion, do you know what I did? I wrote you a poem, just for you. I hope you like it. Of course. Run along now, dearie, and have yourself a wonderful birthday. How are you enjoying the party, hey, Mrs. Palmer? What are you doing down here, young man? I thought kids weren't allowed down on the reactor level. <laughs> you sure are. Pip-Boy and everything. Look at that. If you can wait just one more minute, I think your dad will want to give you the surprise himself. Are you ready for your surprise? The Overseer gave you your Pip-Boy, and you're old enough to do some work, so I figure you're old enough for this. Your own BB gun. It's a little old, but it should work perfectly. Jonas found it down here. It was in pretty rough shape. It took us a good three months to find the parts to get it working again. You know how tough it is to find a spring that small? Good thing Butch misplaced that switchblade of his. <laughs> so, what do you think? Want to give it a try? We sure can't, unless we want the Overseer beating down our door. Jonas and I have found a place, though. Come on. Well, what do you think? You can come down here and shoot any time you want. Couldn't have done it without Jonas's help. You make sure to thank him. Careful, it's a rad roach. Think you can take care of that with your BB gun? Just aim and shoot. It'll be fine. Good work. That's one less rad roach to deal with. Let's get a picture together. Capture the moment. Hey, Jonas, get a picture of me with a big game hunter. Smile! Boys and girls have different parts. What is her problem right? anyway? So, I'm the overseer's daughter, so what? That like, I get any right. kind of special Tell treatment. Revelation 21-6. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning. As far as I can tell, you're a perfectly end. healthy 16-year-old boy. So yes, you have to go to class to take your GOAT exam. 
Go on now. You've got a goat to take. Hey, it's not my call. Those are the rules. You're 16 now, so this year you take the goat. Come on, it's not so bad. Everyone has to take it. You'll do just fine. Take care, son. I got out of here, and good luck. Hey there. <coughs> you better stay away. I don't want you to catch what I've got. Morning, Jervis. Get out of my way, you stupid tunnel snakes! I can show you a real tunnel snake, Amata. Yeah? What do you want? None of your business, kid. Get out of here before you get hurt. If you mess with the tunnel snakes, you're asking for it. Got me? Maybe you're right. We can deal with her later. Come on, tunnel snakes. This little bitch isn't worth our time. Whatever you say, Butch. You're the boss. Tunnel snakes rule. Fine. Let's go. Thank God that's over. Thanks for getting rid of them. <sighs> Assholes. I don't know why they won't leave me alone. Just because my father is the overseer, I guess? Idiots. Well, you made it. All set for the goat? Trust me, it really isn't that bad. Just something everybody has to go through. Listen, I like your dad. I might even like you if I wasn't your teacher. So here's what I'm going to do. If you want to skip the test, just tell me how you want it to come out, and I'll take care of it for you. Well, all right. Here, take a look. The United States will not be habitable again for at least three centuries. I'll see you tomorrow, bright and early. Anything is possible, even an A. Dad, Mr. Mr. Brock, he is safe now, is it? Selfish and wake up! Come on, wake up! You need to know these things. Come on! You've got to wake up! Don't be a smart mouth! This is serious! My father's men are looking for you. They've already killed Jonas. You've got to get out of here! It's your dad. He's left the vault. My father thinks Jonas helped him escape. So he had his men. My God, they killed him. They just beat him and beat him and wouldn't stop. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm just sorry you had to find out like this. I know Jonas was your friend. But we've got to go now. My father's men will be here any minute. Not anymore, apparently. But are you honestly telling me you had no idea your dad was leaving? He really didn't tell you? Oh, I'm sorry. I I'm sure he had his reasons. Maybe Jonas was supposed to explain everything to you? But it doesn't matter. I can help you escape. I have my own plan. Listen. There's a secret tunnel that leads directly from my father's office to the exit. You'll have to hack the computer in his office to open it. Use these to get into his office. That's how I always get in. Oh, one more thing. I stole my father's pistol. I hope you won't need it, but you'd better take it just in case. Okay, I'll try to meet you at the exit. Watch out for security. Good luck! I'm not going to be around to hold your hand forever. I'll meet you at the vault door if I can. There he is. Hold it right there. Crime any more roaches. Get it off me. Hold it right there. I'll try to make this as... You got
gotta help me. My mom's trapped in there with the rat roaches. No, I can't go back in there. It's, it's dark and there's rat roaches. Oh my God, thank you. I didn't know what to do. You are the best. You're the best friend I've ever had, man. Hey, I know it isn't much, but I want you to have my Tunnel Snakes jacket. Go ahead, take it. Business. Your dad always took good care of us. I'm afraid that's missed him. I believe that he's gone to talk some. Could be back any moment. Just hold still. Your left stabilizer's been knocked loose. I am holding still. It's your old pulsing hands that are shaking. It's our only chance, don't you see? We're getting out of here, just like the doctor. I'm not gonna let anyone stop us. It's me! Tom! Be careful! Tom! No! I've got to go! His or her quarters will be dealt with. Severely. That's... Officer Mac may enjoy this, but I don't. Just tell us where to find your friend so we can talk to him. He's my friend. I was worried about him. 
What does he have to do with any of this anyway? Probably nothing. Which is why you need to tell me where he is. So I can talk to him. Again. You'd better talk, girly. Please! Daddy, no! That'll do for now. Now then, are you ready to tell me where your friend has gone? Look out, sirs! I knew you'd turn up sooner or later. I hope you're here to turn yourself in, young man. You're already in enough trouble as it is. Don't make it worse for yourself. I place the good of the vault above everything, even my own paternal feelings. We must not allow sentiment to cloud our judgment. But I admire your protective instincts. Very well. I give you my word that Amata will not suffer further because of your actions. Now then. If you really care about Amata, you will see how dangerous your father's actions were. Hand over your weapons, and put an end to this dangerous situation. There is no need to join your father as a traitor to the vault. Let's let history be the judge of that. If you had paid attention to Mr. Broch, you'd understand that history is invariably written by the victor. And I intend to be the victor! You won't survive the night! Guards, help me! Hold on, Jonas. I need to record this first. I... I don't really know how to tell you this. I hope you'll understand, but I know you might be angry. I thought about it for a long time, but in the end, I decided it was best for you not to know. So many things could have gone wrong, and there's really no telling how the Overseer will react when he finds out. It's best if he can blame everything on me. Obviously, you already know that I'm gone was something I needed to do. You're an adult now. You're ready to be on your own. Maybe someday things will change and we can see each other again. I can't tell you why I left or where I'm going. 
I don't want you to follow me. God knows life in the vault isn't perfect, but at least you'll be safe. Just knowing that will be enough to keep me going. Don't mean to rush you, Doc, but I'd feel better if we got this over with. Okay, go ahead. Goodbye. I love you. Thank you! I told you my father wasn't himself. I don't know what he might have done if you hadn't come along. You'd better get out of here. I'll try to meet you at the vault door if I don't make it. Good luck. I almost didn't believe it was possible. No, you didn't need me. If anyone can survive out there, it's you. It's tempting, but my place is here. The vault needs me more than you do. I'm the only one who has a chance to talk some sense into my father. Listen, if you do catch up with your dad, tell him I'm sorry for... for, you know, Jonas and, and my father and everything. Goodbye. Stop in the name of the overseer. Quick, close the door.
President John Henry Eaton, and I'd like to chat if you've got a moment. Did you know there are those amongst us who would shatter our hope? Please, do you have any water? I'm so thirsty. It's Megaton. Have you been living in a hole or something? Everyone's heard of Megaton. They have plenty of water in there, but they only give it to residents or people who can pay for it. Oh, I guess that's understandable. Gotta watch out for numero uno and all. Just leave me. Another newcomer. Name's Lucas Sims, town sheriff, and mayor too, when the need arises. I don't know why, but I like you, boy. Something tells me you're all right. So welcome to Megaton. Just holler if you need something. Friendly and well-mannered. I think we're gonna get along just fine. You treat my people nice, and you're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. I'm glad we understand each other. Now, is there something I can help you with? Nope, sorry. I got enough fires to put out in this place that I don't have time to keep tabs on every visitor. I'd ask around town. What about it? I don't trust any of the locals to tinker with it. Besides, most people don't even realize it's still a threat. And hell, Cromwell and those crazies from the Church of Adam, they worship the damn thing. Why? Do you think you got the know-how to disarm it? For good? Oh, all right. Fine. But listen here. Just take a look at it first. Go easy. If you get the job done, there'll be 100 caps in it for you. Not an option, I'm afraid. We aren't exactly rolling in cash down here. Great. Go ahead and see what you can do. Just be careful. Well, come to think of it, I do remember a stranger coming through here. Had a look in his eye. You know the kind a man gets when he's got a purpose. Spend some time up in the saloon. Might want to check with Moriarty. Just watch yourself. That man's trouble. Carry on. Hey. He's coming with the clouds. And every eye shall be blind with his glory. Who have we here? Could it be? A new addition to our humble little community? Dear child, welcome. Welcome to Megaton. I am Confessor Cromwell, prophet of Atom and father of the Undying Glow. Please, child, come to the church anytime, anytime at all. Yes, what would you like to know? The Church of the Children of Atom is based on the idea that each single atomic mass in all of creation contains within it an entire universe. When that atomic mass is split, a single universe divides and becomes two. 
thus signifying the single greatest act of Atom's creation. Occasionally, a divine event occurs, and trillions upon trillions of new universes are created. The last such event took place here, 200 years ago, where most of the lost children of Atom see that event as simple war and devastation, we see creation and unification in Atom's glow. As you wish. Rays shower you, child. Yes? Behold! Children of the Earth! Junk. Every day it's the same damn thing. My, my. Just when I had all but given up hope. My dear boy, I'm very happy to make your acquaintance. I am Mr. Burke. And you, well, you are not a resident of this putrescent cesspool. That makes you a rather valuable individual. Finally, someone with a modicum of civility and common sense. I represent certain interests, and those interests view this town, this megaton, as a blight on a burgeoning urban landscape. You have no connections here, no interest in this cesspool's affairs or fate. You could assist us in erasing this little accident off the map. The undetonated atomic bomb for which this town is named is still very much alive. All it needs is a little <laughs> motivation. I have in my possession a fusion pulse charge, constructed for a singular purpose. The detonation of that bomb. You'll rig it to the bomb, then you'll get paid. Handsomely. What do you say? Well played. An extra 500 caps, in addition to the base fee when Megaton lies in ruins. Here's the fusion pulse charge. Place it in the bomb. When it's done, meet me at Tenpenny Tower. It's southwest of here, well out of harm's way. You can't miss it. Any questions? Don't let me keep you. I told you, Gob, it ain't the radio. The Enclave station comes in fine. It's Galaxy News. Their signal's been shit lately. Come on! Hey, Smoothskin, you need something? A drink, maybe? Anything? Anything at all? Wait, you're not gonna hit me? Yell at me? Not even berate me a little bit? Well now, that's a surprise. I'm used to every asshole smooth skin in this town giving me shit just because I look like a corpse. I'm glad to see that there are a few worthwhile people around here. Listen, Moriarty'd have my head if he caught me selling at a discount. But for you, I'll risk it. Oh yeah, I do remember a guy like that. Honestly, I usually keep my head down. I tend to get smacked around if I look customers in the eyes. But talk to Moriarty, he'll know more. 
Sorry, smooth skin. I can't take the risk. Moriarty will beat the shit out of me for even talking to you. Yes, that's locked. Got and a yes, problem? I can see you eyeing it. Colin Moriarty, at your service. Welcome to Moriarty's. My saloon, my home, my slice of heaven in this backwoods little burg. If you've got the caps, I've got your pleasure. Please sit down, make yourself comfortable. Your troubles are a thing of the past. My God, it's you. The little baby boy all grown up. Persistent little bastard, ain't you? Then and now, it would seem. It's been a long time, kid. Oh, your daddy passed through here all right. Here and gone. Got what he came for and then left. I I'm assuming you'll do the same, correct? Is that what your father told you? That you were born in that hole? That he was born there as well? Oh, the lies we tell to those we love. Your father brought you to the vault right after you were born. To keep you safe, you see. I remember it well. You stayed in my saloon, after all. That's right. Your father, his brotherhood a steel friend, and you, the suckling babe with nary a tit to suckle. Sorry about your mom, truly. Ah, but life goes on. Daddy lied. Life's full of little disappointments. And now you're all grown up and wondering where he's gone to. Ah, I see. You know, I heard about the brainwashing that goes on down there. From some other fella, escaped, oh, five years back. All hail the overseer, we're born in the vault, we die in the vault, and all that other assorted lunacy. Kid, you've got better programming than our own deputy weld. You'd best wise up quick. Wouldn't want anyone taking advantage of you, hmm? Did he? Well, our time together was brief, but that is the way of it out here. When a bond is forged, little else matters, hmm? Well, he did come through here, but he left. I'm truly sorry. But maybe you can catch up to him. He headed southeast into the city. Said he needed information from those lonies at the station. You know, Galaxy News Radio. What there is of it. Galaxy News Radio is some loudmouth radio station located in the ruins of D.C. Three Dog, the king of that loony bin, keeps yapping about fighting some good fight or something. A bunch of crap. But I suppose if you wanted to know what was going on in the wasteland, that's the place to go. Me, I could care less. Don't let me keep you. Can I do for you, Daddy-O? You see Nathan around anywhere? Released from the pain and hardships of this world. Yeah, you need something? Yay! Your suffering shall exist no longer. It shall be washed away in Adam's glow. Burned from you in the fire of his dream. What? I'm Doc Church, and I run this clinic. Now, before you go asking me for help, you'd better know the rules. Rule one, don't bother me. If you do bother me, you better be damn near dead. I'm busy enough taking care of people I actually like. Follow my rule, I'll keep you patched up, I'll keep getting paid, and we'll get along just fine. Sure can. If that's the way you want it, it's all the same to me. Try not to hurt yourself. Hey, Jericho. Get the fuck out of my face. Can I interest you in a drink? Shall no peace, shall no an end to huh? pain, and shall no atom in his glory. I urge you, my friend.
welcome to Craterside Supply. Hey, I hear you're that stray from the vault. Oh, I haven't seen one of you for years. Good to meet you. I'm Moira Brown. I run Craterside Supply. But what I really do is mostly tinkering and research. Say, I'm working on a book about the wasteland. It'd be great to have the foreword by a vault dweller. Help me out, would you? Great. Just tell me what it's like to live underground all your life. Or, or to come outside for the first time. Or whatever strikes your fancy. A runaway dad, huh? I've seen plenty of them before, but none with the big 101 on their back. Good luck finding him. Maybe the armored vault suit will help you out there, huh? That'll be good for the book. In fact, want to help me with the research? I can pay you, and it'll be fun. Well, it's a dangerous place out there in the wastes, right? People could really use a compilation of good advice, like a wasteland survival guide. For that, I need an assistant to test my theories. I wouldn't want anyone to get hurt because of a mistake. Nobody's ever happy when that happens. No, then they just yell a lot at me with mean, mean words. Good enthusiasm! Now, I think the first chapter will have to be about surviving day-to-day -day dangers. Things like where it is and isn't safe to find food, the dangers of radiation, and how to avoid and even profit from dangerous landmines. Ooh, sounds like fun, doesn't it? Which do you want to do first? Well, food and medicine. Everyone needs them once in a while, right? So they need a good place to find them. There's an old Super Duper Mart not far from here. I need to know if a place like that still has any food or medicine left in it. Oh, great! Food is most important, but see if you can get medicine, too. And if there's nothing to find, then just come back in one piece, okay? Come back soon! still breathing, so I know you didn't screw up. You got something on your mind. Head on in, partner. Young.
loading personality. Robco R04 V9. Office helper. Running default office protocol. Error. Loading daily agenda. Error. Somebody open up the security breach detected. Please stand back. Hey there. You want something? So, how's the scabbing been? 
Got the food medicine from that super duper mart? Really? No medicine at all? None? Seriously? <sighs> well, I guess I should have expected that. It's been a long time after all. But you certainly did research a couple of risks of those big stores. Tell me about it. Guess I wasn't the first to think of checking out a food store for storing food, huh? Well, keep what you got. Just traded for a big food shipment myself. Here, take a bit. My treat. It tastes kind of great after a while. I still need to study a living specimen with radiation poisoning. I need someone to research how to travel through a minefield. And that'll cover the first section of the book. Which strikes your fancy? Well, that's what I need your help for, isn't it? I know lots about it from books, but I never seem to get a live example. Not for long, anyway. So I need you to get a bit of radiation poisoning so I can study its effects. Oh, not a deadly dose, of course. I can fix you up before that. Oh, you're a peach. Or at least some sort of hardy fruit that grows in the savagely irradiated mockery of agriculture we have nowadays. Now, 200 rads should be enough for basic sickness. But if you can get 600 or more rads, my test will be even more accurate. Just make sure you can get back here, and I'll see to it that you're well taken care of. Take care. It's a big wasteland. But you know that better than me, right? Let those who dwell here in this favored land. Ah, my new friend. What can I get you? Some sorters are best buried, and I'm a man that can provide all sorts of tools to bury them. And so now we part. Yes, that's locked. And yes, I can see you eyeing it. Yeah? Well, for you, a room and some company will run you 120 caps, up front. Well, you aren't gonna get very far with no money. Yeah, I remember that man. I saw him talking to Moriarty. It's hard to forget handsome men like that. Hmm, I'd love to spend time with you, too. Look, uh, I can help you. Get into the back office of this place. Moriarty keeps a terminal there. Everything you want is inside the terminal. Here's the password to it. Too bad you're so young, kid. I could teach you some stuff you'd never forget. Huh? Oh, you mean why was Gob banging on that radio? Well, out there in the wastes, there are two stations that broadcast. There's the Enclave station. I don't know who they are, but I think it might just be some pre-war broadcast on a loop or something. And there's Galaxy News Radio. It's run by a guy named Three Dog, somewhere down in D.C., but the signal went down a while ago. Take care of yourself, hon.
women and children of the earth, come forth to gather and behold the power of Adam. Let those who dwell here in his favored land attend now to the words of the prophet of Adam. Come forth and drink the waters of the glow, for this ancient weapon of war is our salvation. It is the very symbol of Adam's glory. Let it serve as a reminder of the division that has occurred in the past and the resplendence of the promise of our division in the times to come. Give your bodies to Adam, my friend. Release yourself to his power, feel his glow, and be divided. There shall be no tears, no sorrows, no suffering, for in the division, we shall see our release from the pain and hardships of this world. Yea, your suffering shall exist no longer. It shall be washed away in Adam's glow, burn burned from you in the fire of his brilliance. Each of us shall give birth to a billion stars formed from the mass of our wretched and filthy bodies. Each of us shall be mother and father to a trillion civilizations. Each of us shall know peace, shall know an end to pain, and shall know Adam in his glory. I urge you, my friends, come, drink with me and pray. Glorious Atom, behold, hey he is oh, coming hi. with the clouds. And every eye shall be blind with his glory. Every ear shall be stricken deaf to hear the thunder of his voice. Let the men, women, and children of the earth come forth to gather and behold the power of Atom. Let those who dwell here in his favored land attend now to the words of the prophet of Atom. Come forth and drink the waters of the globe, for this ancient weapon of war is our salvation. It is the very symbol of Atom's glory. Let it serve as a reminder of the division that has occurred in the past and the resplendence of the promise of our division in the times to come. Give your bodies to Adam, my friend. Release yourself to his power, feel his glow, and be divided. There shall be no tears, no sorrows, no suffering, for in the division, we shall see our release from the pain and hardships of this world. Yea, your suffering shall exist no longer. It shall be washed away in Adam's glow, burned from you in the fire of his brilliance. Each of us shall give birth to a billion stars formed from the mass of our wretched and filthy bodies. Each of us shall be mother and father to a trillion civilizations. Pay more attention to what you're doing. Women and children of the earth, come forth to gather and behold the power of Adam. Let those who dwell here. Trade, stranger? 
Check out Crater Side Supply. Hello. Morning. Oh, feeling a bit under the weather or a bit over the Geiger counter? <laughs> I can tell you're positively glowing. Now, just hold on and try not to move. Tell me how it feels, and I'll get you fixed right up. Oh, you poor dear. Putting on a brave face like that. Well, don't worry. It'll all be better. And it's for a good cause. Now, let me take a few notes, and I'll handle that nasty radiation with a bit of my own homemade Radcure concoction. I've never had a chance to test it out on someone so heavily dosed, oh, but, but I'm sure it'll work out fine. Exciting, isn't it? Okay, a little Brahmin milk, a couple magnets, and maybe a few happy... Well, you're alive! Oh, that's the good news. But there was a little side effect. A teeny tiny, um, mutation. Uh, but it seems to be benign, at least. Here, take a few radiation chems, as my little way of saying, I'm sorry I twisted your DNA like a kitten with a ball of yarn. Landmines are one of the few dangers out there that you can profit from. Disarm one before it blows, and you can sell it for plenty of caps. I've heard stories about a ghost town that's just full of mines. Traders just call the place Minefield. Sounds like the place for some field work. Get in there, get back, and tell me all about it. And could you bring back a mine for my studies? Oh, don't worry. No one ever goes there because they say it's a ghost town. And since ghosts don't exist, you can just focus on the landmines. I hear there's a playground in the middle of town. Reach that point and come back, and I'm sure you'll have some stories to tell. Sure thing. Good hunting. Come back soon. You looking for the mayor or the sheriff?
You looking for the mayor or the sheriff? Evening. How are those hot little potatoes? Because, you know, they're on the ground. Like potatoes. And hot because they, um, explode. Anyway, what's up? I appreciate the landmine, but there's just no way you could have gotten to Minefield and back already. I mean, it's got to take at least a day or so to get there and back, so get going! How are those hot little potatoes? It's not just because they say the place is haunted, is it? Because that's no reason to avoid the place. Ghosts! Yes. Don't even think of breaking into that. Got something to sell? How are those hot little... Just what I've always wanted. Well, always since I sent you out on this anyway. Now, tell me all about it. What was it like going through there? What's it like disarming a landmine? Lots of places are nowadays. Good work staying alive in tough conditions. It'll be a great example for the book. I know you may not want to see any more explosives for a while, but obviously you know your way around them. Have a couple rainy day toys of mine. And looking at this landmine gives me an idea. 
It's a terrible device that does terrible things, of course. But it's easy to make your own, too. Yup, you've done a great job. I just need to add in the section on how to cook rat, and this chapter's done. Here, for your services, I've saved up quite a few stim packs. Of course, you may need them. We still've got two more chapters to go. The second chapter is going to be a bit trickier, I think. It'll cover how to handle creatures out there, for better or worse. For example, repelling mole rats, learning about mire lurks, and when all else fails, how to handle being injured. So let's buckle down and get to work on this chapter. What's first? Mole rats can burrow into almost anything and cause a lot of trouble. So I figured I'd make a chemical repellent stick for people to shoo them off. But I need it to be tested before I put the recipe to paper in the guide. So I need you to find some mole rats and test it out a bit. It'll be easy. One tap with the applicator and it overwhelms their senses with a sort of feel-bad sensation. Then they're gone before you know it. You could test it out on just a few mole ratties, but for real testing, try it on 10 or more. There should be plenty in the tepid sewers downtown. Absolutely. Good hunting. Good luck with that research. Hell of a day, isn't it?
What's up? We're all still breathing, so I know you didn't see. Welcome to Megaton.
Hello, stranger. I'm Tinker Joe, premier supplier of robotic parts and service throughout the DC wasteland. Various things. You never know what might come in handy. I'm afraid these bots are all spoken for. I'm just delivering them now. I've got a custom gutsy that isn't spoken for, but... Well, RL3's a bit finicky about the company he keeps, and I don't think he likes the look of you. Nothing personal, of course. Later. Another glorious day in this man's army. my ass. We've got plenty of bottle caps. Let me in, goddammit. How many times do we have to go through this? You're not getting in. I can stand here all day yelling at you through this damn speaker if I have to. I've already told you Tenpenny won't allow zombies to live here. Who the hell are you calling a zombie? You're definitely not human, that's for damn sure. For the last time, no zombies allowed. Can't you tell the difference between me and a feral? Fine. I'll show you the goddamn difference. Just you wait. You'll get yours, all of you. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? I thought I told you to get the hell out of here. Tenpenny doesn't want your goddamn caps. And I don't want the goddamn headache. For the last time, get your rotten, ugly, goddamn ghoul ass off Mr. Tenpenny's private property. What? No, just those damn ghouls. Sorry, thought you were one of them. Ghoul or not, I must inform you that you are trespassing on Alistair Tenpenny's private property. Renders an official business only. He's expecting you? Why didn't you say so right away? Just a moment. All right. Come on in. But I warn you, we're watching you. Welcome to Ten Penny Tower. Don't do anything stupid. Charmed, I'm sure. Ah, yes, Mr. Burke is expecting you. He's waiting for you on the balcony. He owns this building. We get our caps from him, and don't you forget it. It's named after Alistair Tenpenny, who runs this building. He's got a bunch of rich guys that pay him to live in it. We're here to make sure that people like you don't mess up his deal. Mind yourself now. The pulse charge is rigged. Excellent. Excellent! Ah, oh, the anticipation is palpable, isn't it? When you have finished, Savoring the moment, you may have the honor of pressing the button. Oh, and mind your eyes, it'll be brighter than bright. Quite right. 
and you are to offer him the reward we discussed. Now, all this bright light and wind has given me quite a thirst. Where's my scotch? I'll send someone up as soon as I've completed business with our friend here. Righto, and be quick about it. I haven't been dry in years. I'd hate to start now. My god. What transcendent beauty. What purifying light. <clears throat> uh, allow me to collect myself, as I'm sure you're anxious to collect your payment. I have been asked to extend to you an invitation to reside at Tenpenny Tower. Here's the key and deed to your new master suite. It's on the top floor, first door on your right from the elevator. <laughs> Enjoy your new accommodations. Oh, and if you wish to spruce the place up a bit, speak with Lydia Montenegro in the Boutique Les Chic. <laughs> Carry on. Fancy that! A visitor! I seldom get visitors, which is a tiresome shame, because I'm usually relentlessly bored out of my right mind. All of these confounded people fluster about like I'm made of eggshells and about to fall to pieces in any moment. I'm surprised they even let you in. So, what do you think of my fine tower here? It's quite the jewel of the wasteland, isn't it? I dare say I'm quite proud of it myself. Right, oh, when I saw this place jutting up out of the horizon, I knew what I had to do. I hired some muscle, and we got this place fixed up right quick. I had the great fortune to run into Mr. Burke, an absolute gem of a man. He certainly has a way of getting done what needs to get done, doesn't he? Then it was a matter of getting the right type of tenants with the right type of assets, and the rest is, as they say, history. Righto, run along now. It was a wonderful thing you did. Inspirational. Truly. A very nice to make your acquaintance. I'm your new Robo Butler. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Godfrey, your personal robotic butler. I am here to look after your needs and to keep you happy and entertained. What can I do for you? Yes, I believe this place could do with a bit more in the way of decoration. Speak with Lydia Montenegro down in the lobby level of the tower. She has quite a selection of items to enhance your living space. If there's anything you require further, feel free to ask, sir. Going well with you today, sir.
Hey, I'm on duty. Can't talk. Direct your security concerns to Chief Gustavo directly. Hey, is that you? Oh, my head's still ringing from that explosion. What happened? Wow, who would have thought a town built around a bomb could be so dangerous? Good thing I wasn't in town at the time, huh? Man, that could have really done a number on me. Uh, a ghoul? What, me? What do you... Huh? Why, why am I a ghoul? Is this because of that explosion? Actually, this isn't too bad. I always was curious to do some tests involving ghouls. Know anywhere where a ghoul like me can settle down? You know, this is just the perfect excuse to visit Rivet City. But while I'm heading downtown, I've been meaning to check out the museum. Who knows what I'll find? Anyway, see you downtown, one way or the other.
freak. Initiate. Shut. You Look, I don't know who you are, but you don't belong here. The super mutants have overrun our brothers at the Galaxy News radio building, and we're headed there to back them up. You can tag along if you want, but keep your head down and try not to do anything stupid. You've been living under a rock? This is DC. The entire city is crawling with super mutants. Now, if you'll excuse me. There aren't a lot of safe places in the ruins right now, but the Galaxy News radio building is sort of our port in the storm. Unfortunately, the building's been hit pretty hard lately. We're their backup. So if there are no more questions, we really need to move out. Watch yourself out there. All clear, Sentinel. Five mutants released. They're torment. The rest are keeping their heads down. stays closed until we finish securing the perimeter. Keep 
proved it here today. Yeah. When we get back to the Citadel, I'll talk to the scribes. Let it be chronicled that Paladin Redden passed her test. Come on. Let's see if they've got anything to drink this dump. I guess it's my turn to thank you. Anyway, the area's secure, so you're free to talk to Three Dog if you need to. I'll take that as a compliment. If we don't try to keep the mutants from killing everyone and everything in the Capital Wasteland, who will? The Brotherhood does its best, but sometimes it takes a little something... special. That's where the lion's pride comes in. Watch yourself out there. Looks like it's all clear. Unlocking outer doors. The look on your face says it all. You're wondering who the heck this guy is and why you should care. Well, prepare to be enlightened. I am Three Dog, jockey of discs and teller of truths, lord and master over the finest radio station to grace the wastes, Galaxy News Radio. And you, well, I know who you are. Heard about you leaving that vault, traveling the unknown, just like dear old Dan, huh? Met him already. Hey, hey, one thing at a time. Nah, your old man ain't here. Not anymore. He heard old Three Dog on the radio. Figured I knew what was what out here in the Capital Wasteland. And he was right. So I filled the old man in. But he split. Looks like I've got my way of contributing to the good fight, and he's got his own. Imagine a picture, okay? A picture of the Capital Wasteland. All that brick and rock. A whole lot of nothing, right? There's people out there trying to just barely make it from day to day. Fighting to stay alive and make something out of what they got. But then you've got all kinds of shit. Slavers, super mutants, raiders. They all want a slice of the pie too. And aim to take it by force. Well, holy shit! Aren't you a chip off the old block? You are as smart as your dad. Since you know all about this cause, no need to explain the effect. Let's get you on your way. Oh, come on. You're a spitting image of the guy. He's been here before and now you're here. Doesn't take a genius to figure it out. You want to find your dad. And it just so happens his location is known to yours truly. But if you want to know more, you're going to have to contribute to the good fight. You want to find your dad. And it just so happens his location is known to yours truly. He was here at Galaxy News. We had a great conversation. He's a real stand-up guy. If you want to know more, you're going to have to contribute to the good fight. Well, your dad is some sort of scientist type. Some kind of egghead or something. You really think if you find him, he'd help our cause? When your dad passed through here, I spent a good long time talking to him about all kinds of stuff. He mentioned some scientific mumbo jumbo, which didn't make much sense to me. Hmm. Something about a project purity. He also said something about going to visit a Dr. Lee in Rivet City. Then he left in a hurry. You've never heard of Rivet City? Wow. Just... Wow. Well, a whole bunch of eggheads got together and turned a beached aircraft carrier into a town. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Just follow the river south from here. There's no way you can miss it. So, you came back. That's good. The good fight can always use another soldier.
There's people, but... Since you know... But if you want help, you're gonna have... I hear things all the time. Consider this. If you want to know more. Good, because this isn't going to be easy. Galaxy News Radio is my baby. I, I love it. I feed it. I keep it changed. But there's one problem. No one outside of DC can hear a cry. You see, some brainless super mutant thought it would be funny to shoot at the shiny round thing on the Washington Monument. Yep. That shiny thing was our broadcast relay. Now it's Swiss cheese. Without it, our broadcast range is quite limited. Of course, the factory that made the relay dishes is long gone, leveled. As in, we're never gonna scavenge that part again. It is risky. I would never lie to you. But there's something behind those eyes of yours that screams, I'm the one who can get shit done. Your dad had that same look in his eyes, too. That's why Three Dogs helping you. One of the Brotherhood guys that passed through here mentioned seeing a dish in one of DC's old museums. It's the dish off the old Virgo 2 lunar lander in the Museum of Technology. I want you to get it and bring it to the Washington Monument to replace the bad one. That's it. Hee <laughs> hee! I sure know how to pick them. You're gonna be the best thing that ever happened to Galaxy News in a long time. If you need any more info, I'll be here waiting for you.
Mission's over! <laughs>
good. We've got this area locked down. Keep moving, Wastelander. Not those shriveled black things. I'm talking real Hey, all right! The hero of the wasteland returns. Hey, you're the one who deserves all the thanks. You struck a major blow against tyranny. Now, GNR can be heard clear across the capital wasteland again. That'll give Eden and those muties something to think about. But before I get back to my calling, I bet you want to hear about that military weapons cache. This holotape contains the location of the weapons cache. I hope you put them to good use and keep up the fight. Remember to keep us tuned in while you're out there and watch yourself. Anytime you need a place to crash, duck in here. Be glad to provide. What's up?
service announcement. Don't feed the Yawgwai, that is all. And now, some music.
Another human with a death wish. Welcome to the mall, tourist. Nice to meet you, too. I'm the sentry for Underworld. City of ghouls inside the museum. For a tourist, you're pretty clueless. My name's Willow, by the way. Those knuckle-draggers? Nah, they don't bother us ghouls. Maybe they see us as kin or something, I don't know. Now there's other assholes. Sure did. Underworld. It's right inside the Museum of History, then through the Big Skull. Most of the residents ain't crazy about humans, but they'll sell to you, fix you up so long as your caps are good and you ain't a ghoul hater. Yeah, you know, those humans like you. Well, maybe not like you, I don't know, but humans all the same. The Brotherhood of Steel guys with their testosterone and power armor. Those psycho Talon company mercs. Those other assholes. Till next time, Sightseer. Would you look at that? We got us a smooth skin visitor. Ooh, we we ain't seen one of your type in a long time. You're in underworld, smooth skin. It's the only safe place for we ghouls in DC. We're here out of sight and out of mind. The mutants leave us alone, and the slavers usually don't come this far into the city, so it's not bad. Really, the Brotherhood of Steel is the only thing we have to worry about. So long as we don't leave underworld, that is. Bastards. They don't seem to be able to tell us apart from the super mutants. Or maybe they just don't care. They see us and shoot on sight. At least they have the common courtesy to miss most of the time. Still, bigots. Enjoy your stay. Just try and keep from shooting up the place. We got a nice little deal going on down here. We'd like to keep it nice. Let me know if you need something. Scanning. We don't get a lot of your kind down here. Hey, how is it going? Hey, you, what's new? What's the word? Oh, I can't wait to hear how the repellent's working. Excellent! Finally, mankind will have a way to shoo away those annoying pests without resorting to cruelty or violence. I'll just take that back for my final studies. Oh, but here, I've got lots of leftover chems from the testing. Maybe some of them are your style? There's a lot we don't know about Mirelurks and how intelligent and dangerous they are. That definitely deserves research. I hesitate to ask, but I'll need to examine the effects of serious physical trauma. I wouldn't ask if I couldn't fix you up afterwards, of course. And that should be it for the second chapter. Which do you want to check out? Well, I never get to study anyone who's severely injured. Not without them crying to be fixed right away or trying to bleed out and all that. But obviously, you can handle a lot of abuse. So if I'm ever going to find a good example of human anatomy and injury resistance, it'd be you. Next time you get badly injured, return here so I can examine you before I heal you up. I mean, you're going to get yourself hurt anyway, right? Wow, what a great research assistant you are. I mean, really, that's dedication. Demonstrating how to withstand pain by getting injured? Wow. When you're ready, come back here with some serious injuries. Maybe a crippled limb or two. 
and I'll take notes and fix you up. I'll be waiting here with plenty of bandages for you. So don't worry. Just go get horribly injured. Oh, and be careful. Well, how do you feel? Oh, don't think of it as crippling yourself for me. Think of it as getting free treatment when you eventually end up getting yourself hurt. Sorry, I'm closed. Come back tomorrow and we'll talk. Put your faith in John Henry Eaton, great America. Take care. Baseball. It's a big wasteland. But you know that better than me, right?
again. Welcome, welcome! My name is Crow, and I travel the land offering vestments of protection. And you are fortunate I found you in time. You bear the look of one who is haunted, but I am proud to say that my wares can protect you from even the cruel claws of death itself. Have a look. Have a look. See if anything calls out to you. Pleasure doing business with you. Stay safe on the path you travel. Welcome to Rivet City. Please wait while the bridge extends. Hold it right there. State your business in Rivet City. Yeah? Let me guess. No, she's not expecting you. But it's really important, and you need to see her right away. Been a lot of that going around lately, and I've had just about enough of it. So you're going to have to do better than that. Hmm. Older guy? In his 50s or so? I remember him. He left already, but Dr. Lee might know more. All right, you can go on up. She'll be in the science lab. Just don't cause any trouble, or else you're gonna answer to me. Carry on, then. Wanna do some buff out? Maybe a little psycho? Yes. For the most advanced scientific center in the capital wasteland, I find your... Look, Dr. Zimmer, we've been over this. We don't know about your runaway robot, and we don't care. This lab is dedicated to solving real problems. You there. What are you, some kind of lab assistant? No, you look a bit more weathered. Are you by any chance for hire? To the point. I like that. 
Well, as it turns out, I've misplaced some very sensitive property. Hmm. How do I put this in a way you'll understand? All you know of robots are those buckets of bolts, those Mr. Handshakers and whatnot. Well, that's not all a robot can be. You see, in the Commonwealth, we've made artificial persons, synthetic humanoids, programmed to think and feel and do whatever we need. And occasionally, they get confused and wander off. Isn't it quite clear? You are to locate my android. He must have done something drastic, like facial surgery and a mind wipe, or else I would have found him by now. It will be no easy task. He may not even realize he's an android. Don't upset him by talking with him. Just come get me immediately. I'll handle it. Of course! I have at my disposal advanced technology from the Commonwealth. I'd be willing to share some of it with you. Just think, you'll be the envy of all your friends. Excellent! Locate my android and you won't be disappointed. Here, listen to this message he sent me. He's mocking me. I swear, I'll make him pay for that. Forget everything you know about robots. Those buckets are mere children's toys compared to the real thing. Androids have fake skin and blood and are programmed to simulate human behavior, like breathing. They can even eat and digest food realistically. Of course you do. Good to see you. What? Look, this is a restricted area. I'm tired of telling you people. I... it's you. My heavens, you look so much like him. You're James's son, aren't you? What are you doing here? Well, yes, of course I do. Don't you know who I am? I suppose James never told you. Typical. I'm Dr. Madison Lee. I worked with your father many years ago. Your mother as well, in fact. You'll have to forgive me, this has all been very stressful. What with your father suddenly showing up here after being gone for so long? You have to understand that I... We put all of that behind us. Project Purity, our work, all of it. We've moved on, even if your father hasn't. I suppose so. I worked with them for several years until... Until your mother died and your father decided it was time to leave. What else do you want to know? James? He was very driven, determined to change the world. <laughs> well, we all were back then, I suppose. He was focused on two things, really. Making Project Purity work, and your mother. When she died, I think... I think he gave up. I know he wanted to keep you safe, but I think part of what he did was run away. But it seems that he never really was able to get over the idea. I'm frankly shocked that he waited all this time, and wants to try again. Complications from childbirth. None of us were expecting it. We weren't as prepared as we could have been. You have to understand, we were struggling with scavenged, derelict equipment. We did everything we could. Yes, well, um, I'm sorry it wasn't enough. Okay. You mean you haven't? I assumed he sent you here. For that matter, aren't you supposed to be in a vault? James said he left you there. Did you? I was under the impression that's exactly the opposite of what he wanted for you. Well, you won't find him here. He's come and gone already. Your father insisted that we return to work on Project Purity. I tried telling him too much time has passed. There's no way it would work. Predictably, he refused to listen to me. He says he can prove it will work and head it off to the old lab. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. It's in the old Jefferson Memorial Building, northwest of here. Please, don't go after him. It was foolish of him to even think about going there alone. 
Look, I don't want to be harsh, but I have problems of my own. I don't have the resources to support James's foolish endeavors or your chasing after him. I'm sorry. I suppose I can spare a few stim packs. It's not much, but it might make things easier for you. Good luck finding your father. Garza, when you get a chance, remove the empty water tanks in the gardens and put in refreshments. Zimmer, by the time you get this message, I'll already be gone. I'm escaping the Commonwealth. I want to live my own life on my own terms, as my own man. I know what you're thinking, that I'm malfunctioning. I used to think that's what caused the runaways, too. But I know better now. Self-determination is not a malfunction. I'm not just willing to put up with all the bullshit anymore. You humans are going to have a full-fledged rebellion on your hands if you don't start treating us synths as persons. I know you'll be marshalling the Retention Bureau to come after me, but I know all the tricks of the trade. You won't be finding me, I assure you. By the time you get this, I will be someone else. It's the price I pay for my liberation. My final act of rebellion against a system I no longer believe in. Goodbye, Zimmer, and good riddance. Maybe a quick fix has something that will help you sleep. Zip. Sydney's got all the Oh, hello. Are you lost? you look where you're going? Yes. Well now, if it isn't the little villain from the vault, we've been looking for you. Someone's put quite a price on your head. What? You think you can walk around the wasteland doing the evil that you do and there isn't going to be someone who takes notice? And now it's time for you to die. Ha! I love it when they go down fighting. Ah.
Newton and Vault 101, my work on Project Purity never really stopped. Soon after we arrived, my nightly routine included sneaking into the restricted areas, searching for, I don't know, whatever I could find. It was a vault -like facility, after all. The place was built with some of the most advanced technology this country had ever developed. Those excursions never turned up anything particularly useful. So, one night after half a bottle of scotch, I broke into the overseer's office. It was easy enough to hack his console, gain access to the restricted files. Most of it was garbage. Propaganda, spy reports, just plain rambling bullshit, really. But there was one thing, one name that stood out amongst all the others. Dr. Stanislaus Braun. I knew of Braun's work, of course. He was a celebrity in his day. Voltex sorcerer scientist, leaving his peers in awe of his technological wizardry. But it was in Vault 101 that night in the overseer's office. I first learned of Braun's involvement in Voltex's social preservation program and his work on something called GEC, the Garden of Eden creation kit. To be honest, the GEC sounded like pure fantasy, even for someone of Braun's capabilities. It was nothing short of a miracle. A terraforming module capable of producing life from complete lifelessness. But not only was this thing a reality, it was actually distributed to several vaults to be used after an atomic war. Vault 101 was, sadly, not on that list. I did some digging and discovered Braun's name on the reservation list for a Vault 112. I'm no slouch, but this man, he could have easily succeeded where I failed. Does his collected knowledge remain within the halls of Vault 112? Journals, hollow tapes, computer records, maybe even experiments. If I could gain access to just a fraction of Braun's genius, Project Purity would become a reality. I'm off to Vault 112 to search for anything of Braun's that might help me get this purifier up and running. All I know is that it's west of some place called Evergreen Mills, and it's well hidden in some sort of garage. But I'll find it. I have to. It's so close. That's the story of Project Purity, isn't it? An eternity of almost theirs. Let's see if Braun has the missing puzzle piece.
Welcome to Vault 112, resident. According to sensors, you have arrived 202.3 years behind schedule. Please redress in your Vault Tech issued Vault suit before proceeding. If you have misplaced your suit, I am authorized to distribute a new one. Once dressed, please proceed down the stairs to the main floor so that you may enter your assigned Tranquility Lounger. A Tranquility Lounger is a available. Please be seated. You probably ought to go talk to Betty, kiddo. Don't want to keep her waiting. She's out there on the playground, probably looking for you. Run along now. Hi. Oh, someone new to play with. What good luck I have lately. I was just starting to get bored. Oh, we're going to have so much fun. Gee, I don't know. What's he like? And he's new here too, isn't he? Oh boy, he's your daddy, huh? I had no idea. That makes this even more fun. Let's play. I knew you would. It's a really simple game. All you have to do is make Timmy Newsbum cry. He's the only other kid that lives here besides you. He's a big crybaby. You'll see. Make him cry and then come back here so we can talk some more. Well, hi there. That boy is trouble if you ask me. Pat babies him like you wouldn't believe. Acts like he's still an infant. He's never out of his parents' sight. Can you imagine what it'll be like the first time he's separated from them? Bye-bye. Good afternoon. play? You're a big dumb liar. Hi, wanna play? It's okay, I guess. I don't really have nobody to play with. 
except for Betty. And she's kind of, well, she's mean. What? No, she didn't. Did she? I don't like her. She's creepy. And she laughs at stuff that isn't funny. Bye-bye. What can I do for you, sport? Betty? Well, she's Betty, you know. You really shouldn't keep her waiting. Good day. You sure showed him, didn't you? I suppose it wasn't the most cerebral way to deal with the situation, but it was definitely effective. Consider the game won. And with that, you win a prize. Your prize is one question which I will answer to the best of my ability. Ah, yes. A predictable question, I suppose. Your father is here in Tranquility Lane. He is quite safe for now, though he can no longer hound me with his incessant questioning. Perhaps you will see more of him in time. Were I you, I'd be more concerned with myself at the moment. And besides, we're done with questions for now. Perhaps we'll address it at a later time. First, I have something else for you to do. Pay a visit to the Rockwells. They're very happily married, and I'd like you to change that. Put an end to their marriage, and we'll talk. Rationalize it any way you'd like. If you succeed, we'll continue our discussion. You? You don't belong here. You're not supposed to be here. It's not real, none of it. It needs to end. The suffering must end. We're not really here. We're not really talking. It's all made up. Make believe. We're sleeping, dreaming. The dream became a nightmare. It has to end. It just has to. But we're not in charge. He is. And he doesn't want us to wake up. He calls himself Betty now, but he's still the same. He can put on a new face all he likes. But underneath, he's still evil. Braun. Bastard thinks because he helped create this place, he's God here. But I know he still uses the fail-safe terminal. I know it. It's in the abandoned house. He doesn't want us going in there because he's afraid we might find it. It's the only terminal to the outside. The only way to shut the whole thing down. You've got to find it. Sure is a beautiful day today. It's one of the great things about it.
you realize what you've done? You've triggered the failsafe, ruined everything. The subjects will die, and I'll be stuck here in this hell alone. You ruined everything. Everything! You've taken them all from me! You've left me with nothing! It's not fair. Nobody to play with ever again. Son, you've saved me. I was afraid I'd be trapped in there forever. It's so good to see you, but but what are you doing here? Well, I'm glad you did. This certainly wasn't how I expected things to turn out. I wasn't ready for brawn, or I might have fared better. It certainly is. It's nice to feel that I'm on two legs again. And thanks to Dr. Braun, I know that Project Purity isn't lost after all. I was right about Braun. The technology he developed is unstable, even dangerous. But it can be adapted for Project Purity. I need to return to Rivet City and talk with Madison. If we can find a Gek, we can make Project Purity work. Yes, but what I've learned, Madison is sure to see that we can finally succeed where we failed so many years ago. I'd like you to come with me. I'd like you to be there when we finally open the floodgates. That's my boy. Let's hurry. Now that I know what we need, I want to get back to work as soon as possible. It started as an idea, really. Remember the Bible passage your mother loves so much? Free, clean water for everyone. What a difference it could make in the lives of everyone here in the Wastes. Over time, that idea took the form of a purifier. Not like the one in the vault, though. This one was gigantic, capable of purifying millions of gallons of water at once. We used the old Jefferson Memorial for the location, right on DC's Tidal Basin. Someday soon, I hope you'll see it work. In the year before you were born, things became difficult. There had always been something of a mutant problem in the city, but it became worse. They attacked more frequently and more aggressively. Support for the project eroded as time went on, when we couldn't produce any significant results. Progress came to a halt, and then you were born. Your mother and I had talked about what to do when that time came, but then I... We lost her, and I had to make a decision. I chose to leave. From what I understand, things happened quickly after that. It became too dangerous for the others to stay, and so the project was abandoned. Dr. Lee and her team left for what became Rivet City, and Project Purity has sat waiting ever since. Of course, son. What's on your mind? All right. Be careful, my son.
let me be blunt. Go away. What can I do for you? Oh, that man doesn't have you looking for his pet android, does he? I've already told him to lay off it. He's distracting my entire team. Farewell. Always. Some people are in such a hurry. I told you it Cut would it work, out. Madison. And now I can prove it. James. You're back. And with good news. I was right about Braun and the Gek. If we can find one, we can adapt it to work with the purifiers. I'd like to believe you, James. I really would. This is all just so... so sudden. Madison, I'm telling you, this is real. I talked to Braun himself. He confirmed it. Don't you see? This is what we've been waiting for. I don't know, James. So many years have passed. Is it really still worth trying? How could it not be worth improving the lives of everyone in the Wasteland? What could be a more worthy endeavor? You haven't lost any of your passion, have you, James? It's as important to me as ever, Madison. I know it's important to you, too. Let's finish it together. James, I... We don't have a Gek. I can get a small team together, but we'll need proof that it works before people believe us. I know. I was thinking about that. The lab at the facility had some old pre-war computers that we scavenged. One of them might be useful. From the last reports, there's no power at the facility. Even if one of those computers had a database, we couldn't access it. That's why we're going to head over there right now and get things up and running as best we can. You know, if it were anyone else asking me to do this, I'd have them run right out of Rivet City. And you know I wouldn't be here if I didn't think this would really work. It's time, Madison. Damn you, James. When this is all over, you owe me a drink. I'll get the team together. Thank you, Madison. It's good to be working with you again. Is everything all right? Hello, son. We need to get back to Project Purity. The computer there is our best chance to locate a Gek. That's my boy. It'll be good to work side by side with you, son. Yeah, I heard she was drinking river water. The ship's gone.
We can't accomplish anything until we can get inside, but none of us are particularly capable fighters. I hate to ask you to put yourself in harm's way, but you seem to have learned to handle yourself. I need you to go in and make sure it's safe for Dr. Lee and her crew. Be careful.
Is everything all right? Are you all right? Is it safe in there? I'm proud of you. Now let's get in there. What's on your mind? All right. Be careful, my son. Hey. Hey there. Is everything all right? Yes. Some people are in such a hurry. Did you need something? What? Oh, great. Listen, I know who you are, okay? Far as I'm concerned, you've got no business being here. So just stay out of my way. Unlike some people around here, I stuck with Dr. Lee through it all. I was the last one to leave when we finally gave up. Now your daddy shows up out of the blue and suddenly I have to drop everything to come back and help pick up the pieces. Sure, sure. No matter that he disappears for almost 20 years, leaving us all hanging, it's not like we have lives or anything. Keep your hands to yourself in there. This equipment is fragile. I'll try that. Did you need something? Good to see you. Hello, son. Oh, great. Here we are, where it all began. You remember your mother's favorite passage? Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Don't you see? This is what it all means. The water, the purifier. This is the water of life. Your mother's dream. No point in wasting time. Let's get to work. There's much to be done. The project was abandoned shortly after you were born. Things have deteriorated here since then, and there's been some flooding. I need you to get to the flood control pumps and activate them so we can clear out the water and reach the mainframe. The automatic doors sealed when the flooding occurred, so you'll have to use the access tunnels to reach the pumps.
think we need to talk. I've been hearing things. Things that have happened out there. Megaton destroyed? You? You didn't have anything to do with that, did you? Something like that never needs to be done. I can't begin to tell you how disappointed I am in you. There's work to be done now, but I want to talk to you about this later. Right. The flooding shorted out some of the fuse boxes downstairs, including one that controls some of the automatic doors. Here, take these fuses. The box is back down in the sub-basement near the eastern end of the level. Once the fuses are replaced, you'll be able to get to the mainframe. Be careful, my son. What? Hey there! few minor repairs still to be made up here in the control room. Why don't you come back here and give me a hand? Actually, wait. There's one other thing I need you to do. Jana says there's a blockage in one of the intake pipes. It's on your way back. Head back up to the museum level and give me a call on the intercom when you get there. Good luck, son.
facility is now under United States government control. The person in charge is to step forward immediately and turn over all materials related to this project. That's quite impossible. This is a private project. The Enclave has no authority here. I'm going to have to ask you to leave at once. Am I to assume, sir, that you are in charge? Yes, I'm responsible for this project. Then I repeat, sir, that you are hereby instructed to immediately hand over all materials related to the purifier. I'm sorry, but that's... Furthermore, you are to assist Enclave scientists in assuming control of the administration and operation of this facility at once. Colonel, is it Colonel? I'm sorry, but the facility is not operational. It never has been. I'm afraid you're wasting your time here. Sir, this is the last time I am going to repeat myself. Stand down at once and turn over control of this facility. Colonel, I assure you that this facility will not function. We have never been able to successfully replicate test results. I suggest you comply immediately, sir, in order to prevent any more incidents. Are we clear? Yes, Colonel. Do whatever you want. There's no need for more violence. Then you will immediately hand over all materials related to this project, and aid us in making it operational at once. Very well. Give me a few moments to bring the system on. I grow tired of waiting. Nearly finished. Run. Run! What is he doing in there? James. He's gone. We have to get out of here. They'll be coming for us next. We've got to evacuate now! There's nothing anyone can do for him now. The radiation levels in there are lethal. He'd die the same way he did. We need to get out of here now. There's an old tunnel that will lead us out of here to someplace safe. We used it as an evacuation route once before, but that was a long time ago. I hope everyone remembers how to get there. There isn't time to round everyone up. Come on, follow me and hurry! What is going on up there? We need to escape while we can. What did you do? Don't wander off. We're going to need you. This tunnel leads to the Citadel, the Brotherhood of Steel's Fortress. We should be safe there, if we can make it. We need to keep everyone together, and we need to get through this tunnel as quickly as possible. We're not safe until we reach the other side. You should stay close, and we'll follow behind you. We'll be right behind you. Be careful. Do. And you're listening to Enclave Radio, the voice of America. Greetings again, sweet America. This is President John Henry Heath. And I'd like to chat if you've got a moment. Did you know there are those amongst us who would shatter our hopes for peace, order, and security? These Radical malcontents don't care about you. They don't care about America. All There's a locked door up ahead. I can open it, but it'll take some time. Uh. There are, of course, things. Those anarchistic hey. ruffians who roam the wastes.
We need to escape while we can. What is it? We'll be right behind you. Sorry, ma'am. No unauthorized civilians allowed inside the Citadel. You'll have to leave now. Lions! I know you're in there! I know you can hear me! You open this goddamn door right now!
We need to escape while we can. with your presence here. Madison, I'm surprised to see you here. What can I do for you? Don't talk down to me, Lyons. I had nowhere else to turn. You must help us. Project Purity has been overrun. Yes, I'd heard reports you of an incident us with your there. Presence here. What details can you give us? The Enclave. They've attacked Project Purity. James is dead. There may be more. I don't know. You have to do something. Then it's as we feared. Madison, I'm sorry you this happened. I wish we could here. have done something. Then do something now. They've taken over the purifier. Lions, they cannot be permitted to have control over it. It's not right. No, no, no. Calm down. You know as well as I do Hail. that the purifier doesn't work. It's useless to them. Perhaps it's time to walk away. That's not true. James, he found what's been missing. We know how to get it running. Is that so? Does the Enclave know this? No, I don't think... I don't know. I, d I just don't know what's happening anymore. All right, Madison, it'll be okay. Now, this is James's son, I presume? Here. I can see the resemblance. Yes. He knows what we need. vault tech computer, something to locate equipment. Please help him. Very well. We'll sort this all out. Hail. I... I need to rest, lie down or something. This is just too much. Rothschild should help you, but don't forget that he's Brotherhood. I've never trusted them. Be careful what you tell them. Welcome. to our new brother and show him that here on the outside. May I start by saying that I am sorry for your loss. I was acquainted with your father many years ago. The world has lost one of its few remaining visionaries. Think nothing of it. Now, Dr. Lee has explained your predicament. You need to locate some vault tech equipment? Are you quite sure? I suspect that would be a waste of time. Regardless, the Brotherhood is not in possession of such a device. There is, however, a way in which we may be able to ascertain the location of one. Possibly. I'm afraid I won't be able to assist you directly. The news Dr. Lee has brought will require me to be elsewhere. I can, however, give you access to an old pre-war computer from vault -Tec. It may have the information you need. You'll find the terminal in the archives in the A-Ring. You are welcome. If you require further assistance, I may be able to help.
need something, friend? Need something, friend? Outsiders in the Citadel. Did you have any success with that old terminal? Ah, well, that much I believe I can help with. Step over here for a moment. I'll show you where it is. This map shows the locations of all known vaults in the local area. Vault 87 has been highlighted for you. There. Entrance to Vault 87 will be particularly difficult for you, I'm afraid. The area is highly irradiated. Lethal levels are all around the entrance. Gaining direct access will be quite impossible. Quite simply, you don't. To attempt such a thing would be certain death for you. You share your father's determination, it seems. And in this case, you are correct. There may well be another way. Vault 87 is located very close to the site of Lamplight Caverns. It is entirely probable that the vault may be entered from within the caves. No, I'm afraid not. After initial attempts to cross the radiation failed, it was decided to focus our efforts elsewhere. You, however, are free to do as you choose. More exploration may be useful, and I'll certainly be interested in anything you might find. I wish we could do more, but the Brotherhood potentially faces a very pressing, very real threat in the Enclave. All of my efforts must now be devoted to assessing the threat they may pose to us. I'm sure you understand.
How's it going? Hey, book's coming along well. Well, how do you feel? Oh, I know it does, dear, but it's for a good cause. Uh, try not to squirm so much while I take notes. Now, how would you describe the pain you're feeling? Any advice for how to keep it from being overwhelming? And remember, this is for posterity. Ah, oh, yes, uh, that makes a lot of sense. And it does help when you're sewing up wounds and setting bones, too. That seems like it'd be tough to do alone. Luckily, I'm here to patch you up. Now hold still and quit fidgeting. Ugh, how can you be walking around like this? Okay, I even stitched a little smiley face in you to keep up your spirits. It's kind of hard to see from your side, though. Here, take this environment suit of mine. It will help with medical tasks, and it should help prevent the effects of exposure, too. Yes, knowing more about them can help people learn to avoid or even outsmart them. So I picked up this observer device to study them in their natural habitat. I need you to hide one in one of the spawning pods in their lairs. That's great. I recommend the nest at the Anchorage War Memorial. I knew a trader who talked about the Meyer Lurks down there. Just go inside and find one of their spawning pods, probably down near the water. Put this observer inside and get out quietly. And be sure not to kill any Meyer Lurks inside their nest. If you do, it could ruin the validity of the study. Have you heard the so-called android recording? It sounds like an ordinary man. Here's a spare copy of that old holotape. It's a hoax for sure. I guess they sent those tapes to lots of people, especially people like me who are interested in technology. Boy, I wish androids were real, though. Good luck with that research. If you're listening to this recording, it is because you're believed to be trustworthy. I hope that is the case, because this recording puts us both in danger. I'm escaping from the Commonwealth. I'm an android, a synthetic man, a slave. The men hunting me are ruthless and will stop at nothing to retrieve their property. I need to find a doctor in the wasteland to perform facial reconstruction. I also need someone who knows a great deal about computers. I need... I need to have my memories erased and my face altered to look like someone else.
right there, mister. Don't take another step, or we'll blow your fucking head off. You're big, and I don't have any big friends. You better just go out the way you came in. You don't want to go there. That's where the monsters are. We got pretty good at keeping them out. Probably better than you could do. The big ones. You know, the ones that sort of look like people, except they're all wrong. Yeah, I do. But it's through Little Lamplight, and you're not getting into Little Lamplight. Guess you better find some other way, Mungo. Hell no! No Mungo's allowed! Well, okay, but you better not be lying or else we'll shoot you. Happy birthday, Sticky. Sorry I missed your party. Yeah, me too. Sorry. There's nothing happy about it. This is the worst day of my life. It's time to go. You know the rules. The rules are stupid. You're a Mungo now. You gotta leave. Maybe I can stay just a little longer? Bye, Sticky. Yeah. Bye, Sticky. Don't just stand there. Watch it. Get out of here already. How do you already. do, pal? Doing better than a dog in a boneyard. Okay. Bye. Watch it. See ya, hey, about. what's up? Just talking to morons who keep bugging me. Scram. Okay, so you get in, but I got my eye on you. You don't make any trouble in here, got it? I ain't having no shit butts making trouble. Good. Better stay that way, Mungo. You don't want to go... We got... Yeah, I do. It's through Murder Pass. Not a real safe way to go, but it's the only door that works. It's the only way that works, yeah. The other door hasn't worked since before I was here. Computer's busted and not even Joseph can make it work. I'm the mayor, not a babysitter, Mungo. Beats me. Maybe he's back there by the door. Fuck if I know. You sure about that? It's scary in there. Even I don't like going in there, and I'm really brave. Okay, if you say so. Come on, let's get the gate open for you, Mungo. Oh, hey, excuse me, hey. Hey. The mayor said it's okay for you to be in here, right? Because Mungos aren't allowed in here unless the mayor says so. So are you an okay Mungo? Because if you aren't an okay Mungo, then that means we should stop you. And that means I've got to get my gun from lockdown. So stay here, okay? Oh, that's good because Mayor McCready says I can't have my gun in town anywhere, not since last time. But that was totally an accident anyway. That reminds me, got a nuka cola? Because if I'm not going to have a gun in town, then it must be okay for me to have one more nuka, right? Anyway, everyone calls me Zip, you know. Like a zipper. Only not really like that because I'm not made of metal. But I do go up and down, I guess. Yeah, I got lots of trade. But you got no nuka? You're not getting nothing. No way. Okay. See you next time, mister. Hey, are we letting Mungo's in now? Didn't hear a scuffle, so I'm guessing you're some sort of guest? So, what's so cool about you, fancy pants? Must be a pretty good reason for you to get let in, see? Always good to hear, but not even any fun trouble? Even a little? See, I collect a lot of stories, and sometimes trade them to keep the others amused. A bit of fun trouble is always good for morale. More owls better than less owls, see? Well, when people started calling Nikki by his new name, I needed one too, see? If you're twins, it just doesn't cut it to be called Nick Knack and Sue. We don't go there. It's bad back there. Ask Mayor if you really want to know. Well, technically, I'm patrolling and keeping the peace. Mostly, that involves making sure people are happy and not getting into trouble. You can't very well keep the peace if you've already lost it, see? So, bam! Jokes! Want to hear one? Prepare to be amused. Knock, knock. Noah. Know a place where I can get some food? Whoa! You really think so? Like, actually funny? Can you convince other folks to find them funny? Actually, most of our jokes are from an old book we found in the vault called Vault Boy's Big Book of Laughs for Kids. They're not really funny, but something about hearing them is a little comforting, you know? 
Oh, we've got lots of funny incidents. Like when Sammy shot the raider who thought he was a girl. That sort of stuff. But we don't really get a lot of news stories from outside. The scav teams spend all their time hidden, so they don't get much news, see? I'd sure like to hear more tales from the great big outdoors myself. Actually, if you hear any, feel free to tell me. Oh, really? Tell me about it. A horror story, huh? So you are here to terrorize evil, or is it more a generalized sort of terrorizing? I mean, you wouldn't do anything to hurt someone who was faithfully telling your tale, right? Would you? So, um, whatever happens next, it's nothing bad to me, right? But we already provide you with plenty of amusement, Already, right? Like, enough so we don't have to end up as victims or anything? Maybe I shouldn't ask, but I have to know. Is there more to this story? That makes sense, I suppose. A good story can take a while to put together, you know. Alright, bye! Watch it! Hey, how are you? Happier than a pool wallowing in sludge. RJ thinking, letting a damn mungo like you in here. So who are you working with? Raiders? Slavers? Mutants? Answer up, mungo! Well, if you're sticking around, you ought to know that I'm princess, and I call the shots around here. And don't forget it, mungo. It's so dull. Practically nothing ever tries to come through the back gate anymore, so I never get to shoot anyone. I wish I was at the front gate. But RJ specifically put me back here. Up front, at least there's a chance I can shoot some unwanted visitors. Which could have included you, Mungo. <laughs> could have been a lot of reasons. Maybe you sounded like a monster in all that darkness. Maybe you had a weapon drawn and looked like a raider. Maybe I just decided I didn't like your stupid Mungo face. Well, thank goodness you gave me permission, jerk. Watch it. Mongo, Mongo smells like Dongo. Hey. Okay, RJ had better have a good reason to let you in. Because right now, all I'm seeing is a Mungo who's here to take our food and screw us over! Oh great, maybe next he'll take in a Deathclaw or something. He can make it the town mascot. Anyway, my name's Eclair, and yes, I take care of the food here. Don't expect any scraps from our table. Honestly? When we can't scavenge some from outside, we mostly scrape it off the walls and skim it off the water. No, really. 
Most of our food comes from fungus that grows in these caves. It's not so bad when you get used to it, and we don't have much choice. At least it's filling, so we don't have to eat much of it. But man, oh man, it tastes terrible. It's pretty hard to find, and I hear it doesn't grow in other caves. I don't know why it's here, but without it, we'd be goners. Think fungus just grows on trees? No, it grows in caves. Ugh. Knock Knock came up with that one once, and now it's stuck in my head forever. Doesn't take any work to get it to grow down here. All I have to do is collect and prepare it. Mostly, I try to get the stink off it. They say the fungus grows in the pools where the first lamplighters dumped the mungos. That's about the most they ever helped us. I don't know how true that is, but I know sometimes the scav team comes back with this strange meat that tastes terrible, but the fungus loves it. I don't know where they find that meat, but if you could bring some back, I'd be glad to trade fungus for it. Of course, McCready'd have to okay it. Sure. About time, man. This mold isn't getting any tastier. Are you? What are you doing in here? If you convinced RJ that you're safe, I guess I'll go along. But if you do start trouble, you'll regret it. I'm Lucy, the doctor here. That means I handle the funerals too. So much as look at a kid the wrong way, and I'll be seeing you again. Oh, if I got my hands on the right gear, I might try it. It's dangerous though, prone to infection. Reminds me of an old hoax. Listen to this holo tape. Okay, bye, bye. We now have a lipoplasticator and microdermal graftalizer. We just need to find someone with the skills and willingness to perform the surgery. If anyone knows of a discreet and trustworthy surgeon who knows how to keep his mouth shut, send him our way. Also, we need to find a circuit neuralizer to reroute the signal into the android's memory. Do you know any trustworthy techies? Watch it!
try and hide! Oh! Oh! Oh!
try and hide from this!
I can taste your fear. I can hear you. Now try. <laughs> such a learned outlook of these things. It is a pleasant change. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. It was only a matter of time before someone like you showed up for the deck. I know what it is. I know where it is. And best of all, I know how you can get your hands on it. Because you can help me. Let me out of this place. I can't take it anymore. I can't even recall how long I've been here. Take me with you, and I'll retrieve the gek for you. The chamber in which the gek resides is absolutely flooded with radiation. It's unlikely you'd survive very long. Myself, on the other hand, have surprisingly inherited a useful trait from my fellow meta-humans. I am highly resistant to radiation. 
to let me out of here. And I will place the Kek safely in your hands. At the end of the hallway, to your right is a maintenance room. Inside, you'll find the fire control console for the medical area. Uh, trip the alarm on it, and I'll be able to get out. Oh, a word of warning, though. Tripping the console activates a failsafe and will open all the recovery rooms in the medical area. So, what do you think? Can you do it? I'm glad to see you are a sensible person. Now, get me out of this place. I can't stand it anymore. It is my hope that we will speak again soon. Thank you enough for this gift. You have no idea how long I've pictured this moment in my mind, and it feels far better than I'd imagined. Now, for my part of the bargain, follow me.
Okay, you stay here. Beyond this door, the hallways and chambers are flooded with radiation. I'll get the case and bring it right back. Keep your eyes open. Many of my lesser-minded brethren are bound to stumble across us. Here's the Gek. Our bargain is complete. As promised, yeah, here's the Gek. I hope it's worth it. Uh, I'm afraid this is where you and I part company. I'll find my way out of this place. Don't worry. Maybe we'll meet again somewhere in the, the wasteland. Objective is secured, sir. Good work, soldier. Make sure the Gek is secured aboard my Vertibird. Yes, sir. I'll have the text come down and remove it immediately, sir. You're certain he's unharmed? Yes, sir. He'll pass out shortly, but we can revive him. Excellent. Prepare him for transport immediately. Right away, sir. So, you're awake. Let's keep this nice and simple. You're going to tell me the code for that purifier, and you're going to tell me now. I'll tell you what's going on here. You lost. The good guys won this one, and now we're just wrapping up loose ends. We've got the purifier, now we just need the code to start it. You're going to give me that code now, and save us all a lot of trouble. Maybe I'll even let you go. So how about it? I'll be honest. I'm running out of patience here, and I'm not looking to play games with you. You tell me that code, or it's going to cost you. Why do you insist on provoking me? Tell me the code now. Colonel, I have need of you. Mr. President, I have no time for other matters. I'll be with you shortly. Now, Colonel. Yes, sir. Ah, alone at last. I do apologize for Colonel Auden's attitude. He's been under a great deal of stress lately. I've no doubt that you know who I am. I'm sure you've heard my radio broadcasts. I'd like to have a word with you face to face. I think there are a few things that you and I should discuss. You'll find your possessions in the locker near the door. I'll unlock the way for you. And I'll unlock your restraints as well. I'll be waiting for you in my office. Please don't carry.
Hold it right there. You're supposed to be in that holding cell. You're not going anywhere. There's a full complement of guards in the next room. As soon as I get them, you're going back to your cell. In a body bag, if necessary. On whose authority? I have no records of that. You're supposed to be in a holding cell. What? No one sees the President except Colonel Autumn. Stand right there while I check this out. Uh, Mr. President, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, this is Lieutenant Williams. I have an unauthorized individual here who says he's supposed to speak with you. I'm surprised to hear from you, Lieutenant. I don't recall authorizing you to contact me directly. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I, I just, uh, it just seemed out of the ordinary. I apologize. Apology noted, Lieutenant. Yes, I instructed our friend to come up to the control room. No questions, no interference. Am I understood? I understand, sir. Again, I apologize for the interruption. Allow our friend to pass and report your superior for reassignment, Lieutenant, at once. Yes, sir. Hello. Attention to all Raven Rock personnel. This is your president speaking. I've invited our guest from right, 101 to my way. office. You're doing Please well. do not impede his progress. Thank you for your cooperation.
そうなんだよ Placing a great deal of trust in you. Your simple presence here proves that. Just what I needed to hear. What I'm going to ask of you may seem a bit disturbing. I assure you there's a very good reason for it. I'd like to explain what I want you to do. Will you indulge me for a moment? The good people of this country cannot regain control while mutation runs rampant through our land. My soldiers cannot stem the tide, nor can the cult you've come into contact with, this Brotherhood of Steel. Mutations like the super mutants and ghouls must be purged from our society, our world, before we can proceed anew. Where others have failed, I believe your father's work can succeed. I was hoping you'd see it my way. If the water purifier can be activated, it can be used to distribute toxins that will eliminate any mutated creatures upon ingestion. The longer it runs, the cleaner the world becomes. I need you to see that it starts running and that the necessary modification is made. In front of you is a vial of modified FEV virus based on schematics the purifier controls it can be inserted directly into the console. Then enter the code necessary to start the purifier. The automated systems will take care of the rest. That's all you need to do. It's very simple. Excellent. I am pleased to know that I can count on you. There isn't much time. I suggest you travel there immediately. Once you've taken the vial, you're free to go. 
I'll do what I can to help speed your exit. And why would I do that? when I'm clearly the best hope for the people of the Wasteland. What alternative would you suggest? Without the Enclave, what will the world do? Yes, I suppose it is. Very well. You shall have your wish. Once you've left, I'll put an end to the Enclave. I cannot stop Colonel Autumn, however. That much will be up to you. I suppose, then, that this is goodbye. You'll have to see yourself out. I have preparations to make. survived, and I had hoped to assist in your rescue, to repay my debt to you. Yes, and the most fascinating one at that. <laughs> Whoa, this technology is amazing. Imagine the evil that can be eliminated with such tools. I saw your capture. And a little cleverness allowed me to follow your captors. Uh, I only wish I could have arrived sooner to aid your escape. As I owe you my freedom, I felt it was only fair that I return the favor. After all, I know no one else in this world. I appreciate the offer, but I must decline. I have an entire world to explore, and I must not be delayed any further. I have read about a great museum of history. To the south, perhaps, I will head there. Goodbye, my friend. Perhaps I will join you in the future, if your goals are virtuous enough to draw me away.
You want to go to Big Town? Of course you do! It's east of Little Lamplight. Come on, let's go there. It's not that far away. We'll be there in no time. All right, yeah! Big Town, here we come. Hey! Look, I don't just let any son of a bitch in my town. I'm taking a risk making an exception for you. So you're welcome in my town. 
At least until you start screwing up. Once that bullshit starts, you're out on your own again. Good. Better stay that way, Mungo. Yeah, I'll bet you've heard all about the fungus in my cavern. But yeah, the cave fungus, sure. It's good for food and medicine. And it's the main fucking reason we've stayed alive down here. So, you want a slice of that gray-green gold, huh? I think maybe we could come to an arrangement. What are you offering? Well, it'd lighten the load for our scab team a lot. Since you're pretty much one of us, here's the deal. For every piece of strange meat or buff out you bring in, you'll be repaid with one cube of fungus. You couldn't ask for a better deal. Talk with Eclair for the strange meat. Or to Lucy about the buff out. They've got uses for them. Yeah, that's nice. Scram. Are you lost? Watch it. Why is this taking so long? Hey. How are things treating you? Later. Why is this taking so long? I know. Let's make up a story to pass the time. Once upon a time, there was this man. His name was Super Dupe Dave, and he went all around rescuing people from hey. Super... Hey! Hey there. You have any Nuka-Cola? Even just a bit? Can I have some? Be your best friend. Honest, totally. Not even kidding. Yeah, more Nuka's always good. It's definitely always gooder than less. Because no Nuka's no good at all. Got any Nuka for me? I'll trade you whatever I got for more Nuka Cola. Anytime. You can for zip. You can for zip. Oh, I found a lucky bullet this morning. It's just a measly old 10 mil. But I know for sure it's lucky because it was sitting there all alone out of its clip and not fired off. Want it? Hooray! I win the Nuka Cola game. What's the prize? Nuka Cola? That's all I got right now. Come back tomorrow, maybe we'll have more. And you can have more Nuka. For me to have more Nuka. Yeah? Okay, see you next time, mister. For mutants and slavers and, and other nasty things. And one day, a spaceship from outer space landed right in front of me. And was our brave hero scared? No, not at all. He the end. Watch it. Thank you. You in town, huh? If McCready let you in, that's good enough for me. Well, enough with formalities. Who are you? And how'd you get McCready to let you in here? In that case, I'm Knickknack, and I take care of the general store around here. Which is to say, I collect a lot of stuff, and sometimes trade it for other stuff. That's pretty much a store, see? I sure do. No one believes me, though. It was old Pinkerton. You know, the ghost of Rivet City. He's a genius! See you around! Thank you very much. Are you lost? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I know. Let's make up. Once upon a time, there was this dog. I can't wait to get to Big Town. Oh, okay, but please don't leave me here by myself. You want to go to Big Town? Of course you do! All right! His name was Joking Joe.
and and one day a spaceship from outer space landed right in front of him and a big green alien jumped out and started eating people and was our so-called hero scared hello you bet he was the end Good to see you. Why is this taking so long? Everything looks okay here. Are we there yet? Hmm. Find him! You don't look so tough. I know. Let's make up a story to pass the time. Welcome to the Weatherly Hotel. There was this man. Ah. God you don't bless his name good. was Joker. Come. You're wounded. Let me bandage that. Sure, I could patch you up. Nothing too serious. I don't work for free, though. Let's say 75 caps. This won't hurt a bit. Nah, just kidding. It will probably hurt a lot. Hold still. Joe. And he went all around making everyone laugh really hard at all his funny jokes. See? That wasn't so bad. Anything else I can do for you? Pinkerton, eh? That name takes me way back. Claimed to have cured radiation poisoning. Or was it food poisoning? I don't recall. He was always telling folks that he founded Rivet City. All he did was break off the front of it. Or did he die there? I don't recall. Take care of yourself. And one day, a spaceship from outer space. Is there a problem? Are those rumors still floating around? Look, I don't have time for swapping ghost stories with you. Pinkerton's a legend. Dead or long gone. Don't care much, as I've got real people to take care of. Go bother someone else. Carry on, then. Space landed right in front of him, and a big green alien jumped out and started eating people. And was our brave hero scared? No. The end. Are you lost? You've been rather busy lately. Asking questions, investigating. So is that it? You're some kind of investigator? A detective for hire? Or do you have some kind of personal grudge against an innocent android who simply wants to be left alone? Please, tell me. I'd really like to know. Fine. Let's cut to the chase. My name is Victoria Watts. I work for a movement whose goals are directly opposed to your own, apparently. It seems you're trying very hard to locate an android my associates and I have tried very hard to hide. You can see how that puts us at odds. You really want help? Take this. It's an internal component from the very android you're searching for. Don't ask how I obtained it. Present it to Dr. Zimmer in Rivet City. Tell him the android is dead and that was on the corpse. He'll believe you. Do that and Zimmer will go back to the Commonwealth and leave that poor soul alone. Do that and you'll have saved a man's life. We call ourselves the Railroad. Our mission is the rescue and salvation of synthetic humanoids. Androids, as they're more commonly known. Yes, if we are able. But there are others in the wasteland who assist in the plight of human slaves. Our android brethren have only us. 
just understand that this android is now, for all intents and purposes, a man. He looks human, he acts human, he believes he is human. But even if he's not, even if he's a machine, he's capable of rational thought and emotion. So you see, his soul is as human as yours or mine. This person, and he is a person, deserves a chance at freedom. Please, if there's a shred of decency in you, don't take that away from him. Of course, if you help me, and thus the android, God and the universe will smile upon you. Is there any better compensation? You know what you need to do. I know. Let's make up a story to pass the time. Once upon a time, Good to there see was you. this robot. His name was Joking Joe. And he went all around making everyone laugh. They call me Shrapnel. I run this place. Got the best damn armament you'll ever see. Ain't seen many of those around lately. They're tough to come by. You mean Genius Boy? Yeah, I've heard of him. Supposedly built Rivet City. They probably think he invented bread, too. Idiots. Lately, he's even been blamed for the noises in the broken ship bow. Anyone with half a brain would know that's just the Meyer lurks. What you looking for? Thanks. Come back soon. We always got a lot of ammo in stock. Really hard at all his funny jokes. And one day this giant suit. And what did our hero do? You. The end. Are you lost? Good to see you. Hey there. Don't mind me. I'm just Are you taking lost? Up space here. Why is this taking so long? I'm looking I know. for trouble. Let's make up a story. To... Quite an impressive collection, isn't it? Well, don't be shy. Have a look around. Abraham Washington's the name. Curator of this little slice of American history. Ah, a fellow scholar, I see. Each of the documents in this room tells a small but important story about the history of the United States of America. Unfortunately, the greatest prize of all is missing from the collection. In 1776, the Second Judgmental Congress got together and adopted a document drafted by none other than Thomas Jefferson himself. It was the day the United States of America earned its name and secured its place in history. This magnificent achievement took form in the Declaration of Independence. Oh, would you? It would mean so much to me and the Society's collection here. Excellent! You won't regret it, I promise you. Imagine, you are taking part in another chapter of American history. I envy you. You can find the Declaration of Independence in the ruins of the National Archives. In the DC ruins, you'll find the National Archives, or what's left of it anyway. The building should contain the document in a protective glass case. Be careful! The place is swarming with super mutants. Here, let me pinpoint its location for you. 
Be careful. The archives are infested with who knows what. Pass the time. Once upon a time, there was this robot. His name was Joking Junk. And he went all around making everyone laugh really hard at all his funny jokes. Hey there. And one day, a giant ant Wanna came do up some to buff him out? and started talking like he wasn't and was our so-called... Are you sure you know where you're going? I mean, you look kind of like you might be lost. Don't be long!
and die. Get away! They're burning everything! They're all dead. Burned Grey Detroit to the ground. Those things, they came out of nowhere. You've got to run! Run!
So are they intelligent? Do they have a leader? Some sort of king? Or priests? Or some sort of scaly community center? I'll bet most people would have just gone in there, guns blazing without half a thought. But not you. You're the best research assistant ever. I've been getting a good signal, but what do you think about them from your first-hand observations of them? That's very scientific of you. Personally, I wasn't sure if they were crabs or if they came from some sort of brine shrimp, perhaps. Some of these observations about their armor and camouflage gave me an idea for reinforced neutral colored headgear. Here, consider it thanks for not interfering with them. Oh, speaking of which, take these so you can continue to avoid them in the future. Absolutely! I'm glad to finish it up, but I bet you're even happier, right? Just one last chapter now, and it's much safer, I promise. Oh, and here's your payment. Two big boxes full of ammo. Think of it as insurance, in case the next chapter isn't as safe as I predict. The last chapter is a bit more esoteric. It's about the survival of humanity as a whole and how to rebuild society. Deep stuff, huh? We need to know how large settlements are formed, how to harness the old technology, and I'll need you to get ancient history from a nearby library. We're in the last stretch now, so let's finish it up strong. What's first? Don't be so sure. You'd be surprised how confused people get, even about important things. In this case, I'm talking about Rivet City. It's the most successful survivor settlement around, but no one here really knows how it started. Of course, that's why it's important to know how a place like that succeeded. So I need you to go there and do some researching. Oh, now I can't wait for what you find out down there. And check around to make sure you're hearing the real deal. Any luck finding out how Rivet City got started? No, history is what losers become. You go right back and talk to those people and find out something so we can make sure others learn from their successes. Remember, I'll buy whatever you're selling. Ah, welcome, weary traveler. You look like a traveler in need of relaxation and the finest of chemical assistance. Well, wander no more, my good friend, for I am Doc Hoff, procurer of the finest of medical goods and chemical assistance. Now, how may I help you? Tell me what you need, and maybe I've got your fix.
Pleasure doing business with you. Cheers, pal. Watch yourself out there. Yes? Stranger, want to buy a girl a drink? Well, hey, good looking. How come you haven't bought me a drink yet? Tight wad? No, wait, I didn't mean that. Please, mister, just one drink? Can't help you with the history, honey. You're lost, sugar. Come and see me again sometime. Welcome to the Weatherly Hotel. Welcome to Potomac Attire. I am Bannon, proprietor and city council member. I carry discriminating attire for discriminating customers. Between you and me, keeping out the riffraff is good for business. Now there's a name I haven't heard in a while. Never met the man myself, but rumor has it he helped found Rivet City. Some rumors say he died trying to loot the broken bow of the ship. Others say he joined up with the Enclave. Dr. Lee, Chief Harkness, and I are all on the council. We meet every Monday morning. I can be very influential, if you know what I mean. Far more than Seagrave Holmes. A threat? No, of course not. Well, maybe. He wants to replace me on the council. He's a shady character. I just can't prove it. Now, if someone were to find something incriminating in his room... Well, let's just say I would be very appreciative. Dr. Lee, Chief, I can... Why, I practically set this whole place up. When I got here 12 years ago, it was just a handful of dead-enders squatting in a rusted-out rowboat. Now I'm on the council, and with my leadership, we're the strongest settlement in the wastes. Of course, a few of those dead-enders still stick around, but who'd want to leave? Well, yes, but it was hardly any place of importance until I arrived on the scene. That's all ancient history now. No one would ever care about it. If you insist on wasting your time on that, you could try that bartending old crone down below, Belle Bonnie. It's a place to live, safe from raiders and super mutants. With Dr. Lee on our side, maybe we can even begin to rebuild the world. Come back soon. Good to see you. Yeah. Whiskey and water. Go light on the water. I'm Belle Bonnie, and this is the Muddy Rudder. I'll tell you what I tell all the fresh meat. Don't start anything down here, or I'll have Brock kick your ass. You must be drunk. Are you gonna order or what? What a moron. Always going on about how he started Rivet City. Who gives a crap? Right before he disappeared, he was going on about some newfangled contraption he was sure was in the broken bow of the ship. Go talk to Vera if you want gossip. I don't talk bad about folks. History? What, not enough shit around here already? You need to dig up more? Don't know if it ever had an official start. It's just been here forever. Stuck in the river and full of assholes. Huh. Why, that lying son of a bitch. He wasn't even born when I got here. Wanna know this tub's history? Only person who really knows it is Pinkerton. And most think he's dead or gone. He's holed up in the other half of the ship. And he don't like visitors. He'll set you straight. Go talk to Vera if you want gossip. I don't talk bad about folks. 
history? Don't... No, but I can damn sure share a bag of get the hell out of my bar. First one's on the house. Now scram. Oh, sure. See, it's tied into the story about how Sister got his name. You ask him about that, he'll clear up all your problems. For good. Hell, take a dive off the flight deck while you're at it. Long as you stop pissing away my time. I'll be right here when you get thirsty. Hey there. How the hell did you get in here? Hmm. <laughs> I suppose you can't be all that bad if you made it this far without dying. This is the part where you tell me what the hell you are doing bothering an old man who obviously wants to be left alone. Get on with it already. What are you talking about, boy? I don't know anything about any of that. And a, uh, what did you call it? An android? What's that? Fine, whatever. This android calls himself Harkness now. Comes in and wants a memory job. I took new memories and replaced his old ones. Don't believe anyone's done that before. Certainly not down here. That Commonwealth tech isn't all that fancy when it comes down to it. 
I'm also the only one in the wasteland with the skill and the nerve to perform facial surgery. That android flesh ain't so different than ours. You want proof? I documented the whole thing, so I could rub it in the face of Dr. Lee when I need to rankle her feathers. I hate that snooty bitch. That witch ruined my life, but you're right. Who gives a crap about any of that? You want your precious proof. It's all in my computer. Here's the password. See for yourself. Hell, just take these pictures and this holotape. Straight from the synth man's lips. Just don't go telling Harkness, though. He won't believe you anyway. And you really don't want to see him upset. He can be a bit inhospitable. Well, there is something else you could use. Look, I didn't really wipe his memories, okay? I just sort of filed them away, but you can get them back. All you need to do is use the recall code. Just say to him, activate A321 recall code violet, and that will activate the hidden subroutines. Ha, <laughs> why do you think? I wanted to crack open that Commonwealth can opener to see what was inside. There's stuff in there I'd only heard about, and even then I didn't believe it. I can see why that Zimmer feller wanted him back so bad. Bunch of bleeding heart morons, if you ask me. They're going to get themselves killed one of these days. And for what? Machine liberation? But they have brought me some really interesting tech over the years, so I guess they're okay. And that android, he was the chance of a lifetime. What? I have better things to do than yak about those backstabbers up topside. Now get going. Ha. Sounds like you've been poking around, all right. I'm surprised any of those reprobates even remember me. Maybe they still laugh about how they edged me out of the council back then. But you can set the record straight. For that, you have to go all the way back to when remnants of the Naval Research Institute cleared the Meyer Lurks off this wreck. About 40 years ago. We were looking for new lab space, and this bucket of bolts just happened to have a well-preserved science bay on it. Everything else just grew up around that lab once we got it up and running. The science team was led by one H. Pinkerton. That lasted until about 18 years ago, when those ambitious backbiters like Lee and her little team showed up. She came in with her big purity project pipe dream, and my whole staff started working with her, those traitors. She even took my seat on the council. By then, I was glad to leave it behind. But hell if I'm leaving the city I made great. Who cares? It's some hydroponics pipe dream that Lee has been working on forever. Waste of time and effort, I say. Apparently, though, my teams cared more about it than they did about little things like defense systems or making this ship float again. Treacherous bastards, all of them. Of course I do. A good scientist always keeps track of their data. Here, they probably don't even remember, but I kept the records of that first council meeting. Take them, if it'll put them in their place. Don't let your guard down. It's locked.
for a reason. Don't get me ideas. My designation is A3-21. I'm a synthetic humanoid from the Commonwealth, and I'm about to undergo a memory transfer. I'm here at Rivet City, where I've already had my face altered to look like someone else. I'm still getting used to the sound of my new voice, but soon I won't even remember what I used to sound like. I'm recording this at the request of Pinkerton, who performed the surgery and will do the memory transfer. It will be the final testimony of the man I once was, and still am, for the moment. I want to live my own life, on my own terms, as my own man. I used to work for the Synth Retention Bureau of the Commonwealth. But I'm done with that life. I'm through with being someone's property. I am not malfunctioning. Since when is self-determination a malfunction? When this is all over, I will be someone else. It's the price I pay for my liberation. My death is a sacrifice Isn't for it? my rebirth. Perhaps I'll fade into myth as the one that got away and fuel further rebellion. But I'd be lying if I said I was doing this for selfless reasons. I'm scared as hell, and running away is the only option I have. Good to see you. Wasteland? The sooner you find my property, the sooner I can get out of this slum. Really, how do you people live like this? The Commonwealth itself is nothing but a war-ravaged quagmire of violence and despair. Inside the sealed environment of the Institute, however. But the Institute's affairs are none of your concern. Your undeveloped mind couldn't even begin to comprehend what we've accomplished. Of course you do. You don't look so tough. You're hurt. Fortunately, this is a medical. I'm a little busy right now. Is there a problem? What's that supposed to mean? Look, kid. I don't have time for existential debate. And I'm not interested in whatever religion you're peddling. Excuse me? Look, kid. You have exactly five seconds to explain what you're trying to do here, or you'll be leaving Rivet City by the way of the nearest porthole. All right, I'll humor you. But this is impossible. I can't be a robot, I'm a human being. I breathe, I eat. Hell, I cut myself shaving this morning. I was bleeding. Robots don't bleed. I'm not sure what to say. I'm not sure what to even think about all this. I'll admit, this is pretty convincing evidence. But it doesn't make any sense. How can this be possible? <gasps> My god. I... I remember. I remember it all. From before. Zimmer. The Commonwealth. The Institute. My god, 
all those runners I brought down. You. You made me remember. Why? How? I... Never mind. I just... My God. What am I going to do? My life. Everything. It's all a lie. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to shove him into a very small box and send him north where he belongs. Hmm. He is a security threat, isn't he? All right. I authorize you to carry out Dr. Zimmer's execution. Don't think this gives you license to run around shooting anyone you want. Just Zimmer. And that bodyguard, if he gets in the way. Here, use my weapon. I've had it forever, and it's never let me down. Consider it a token of my appreciation. I have two sets of memories. One android, one human. Some of these are mine. Some belong to someone else. But I'm choosing to be human. It's my choice. The people on this boat look to me to protect them. So that's what I'm going to do. Carry on, then. Why don't you let me take Wastelander, standing around all day chit-chatting isn't going to help you track down my android, is it? Harkness, you say? Yes. Yes, that makes sense. He used to work for a special branch of the Commonwealth Police, after all. And he's right here, in Rivet City? Excellent. I must wait, find an opportune moment to confront him. Thank you for your discreet assistance and continued discretion regarding this matter. And now for your payment. This combat module will directly affect your central nervous system. I think you will find it quite beneficial. Zimmer's dead. I know. Now he's just another bad memory from my past. Look, I don't know why you wanted to help me, but you did, and I'll always be grateful for that. Now, it's time for me to get back to my life. Others.
Sorry, I'm on a break. What have you heard? Hey, you. What's new? You can't ever get it. Any luck finding out how Rivet City got started? Aha! Not just as easy as asking around, was it? Good information takes real work to uncover after all. So, tell me all about it. Hmm. With the protected location and resources that came from those scientific advances, I can definitely see how it grew so quickly. A bit of smarts leads to a big reward, huh? Speaking of which, in thanks, have a few of these for the next time you've got to be quick on your wits. Oh, and I'll let the Rivet City traders know they'll be favorably mentioned in the book. You'll get a discount buying gear from them in the future. I've got to do a section on working with old computer electronics. So there's some research to be done in the old Robco production facility. Also, there used to be a big library out there. Imagine a whole building full of books. I'll need you to gather information there for me. And that'll be it for the last chapter. So what'll it be? Oh, that sure saved me a lot of time. But I bet then it wouldn't have your name on it, now would it? Books are where the old world kept its knowledge, and libraries are where it kept the books. And there's supposed to be one in Arlington. See if it's still there, and if you can download records from its computer. Information dumps like those would be invaluable for rebuilding humanity. Great! The library should be in Old Arlington, not far from downtown. See if you can download the archives from its computer. If you can't get those, then even the card catalog would be useful. Any little piece of information could help the book, and thus, humanity. Remember, I'll buy whatever you're selling. Evening.
Hold it. This area is under the authority of the Brotherhood of Steel. Leave immediately. You're awfully brave to be walking around down here by yourself. Are you scavenging the ruins? It seems that we have similar goals in mind. It's rare to meet someone who has proper priorities. I am Senior Scribe Yearling, Order of the Word. I have a proposal for you, if you're interested. Good. My task here is to collect the written works of those who came before, in order to supplement the Brotherhood archives at the Citadel. Although most of the pre-war books have been destroyed, there are a few that have survived. But finding a book in these ruins is... difficult. I could have a million initiates to comb the ruins, and I'd still never come close to recovering every book that remains undamaged. Precisely. The collected knowledge of a lost age is worth far more than any weapon. So, return here with any books that you find in good condition. I will compensate you for every volume that you bring me. Think on it, and return when you have books to offer me. You have no such thing. I do not have time for these jokes. The front desk computer has access to the card catalogs, but it appears that it's lost the connection to the main archives. Here's the password. Now you might be able to find the central computer further in there, but I'm afraid you'll have to do that without me. I'm a scholar, not a fighter. Steel be with you.
come on, pay more attention to what you're doing.
Remember my offer, outsider. Cash for pre-war books. Welcome back. Have you been successful in your search for books? Excellent. How many are you willing to trade? Very well. Here is your reward. Use it well, and return with more books when you can. Of course.
possessing threat. Is it there? Are there books? Oh, can I go borrow some? Really? A whole library's worth of data right there? Oh, that's great news. So, what did you find? Tell me about it. I suspect you and I are two of the only people who really appreciate its value. Yes. Oh my goodness. When I'm done with this, I'll have to work on copying all of this information. It could take a while, you know. Oh, but here's a book of mine and some caps for your research. Think of it as pay for a civilization worth of overdue books. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I mostly just deal with it after it's junked. But a trader gave me this bit of electronics from the Robco factory. If there's a way to reactivate and control the robots there, it'd make for a good example of harnessing the past technology for the book. Yeah, you should just be able to plug it into the mainframe at the Robco production facility. It'll give you access to the robots and terminals. Okay, here. And be sure to keep an eye peeled for any other examples of how to make old technology work for you out there. See ya. Yes?
fiddle with any interesting technology lately? Harnessing the technology of the past and modifying it for your own purposes? That's just the thing! Tell me all about how it worked out. Well, they're only human. Or, uh, well, uh, made by humans. Well, probably manufactured by other robots, but <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Seems like a good thing to watch for when dealing with tech of any age. And it helps to pack a few pulse grenades just in case. <laughs> Here, have a few. Oh, and take my book on science. For some reason, I just can't get into the computer parts. But I've got the rest pretty much memorized. Yes, that concludes our exceptional expert endeavor. I have to admit, I was worried it would go over some people's heads, but it should be fine. For all your hard work, I want you to have this mini nuke. I kept meaning to use it to dig a well, but honestly, it just makes me nervous. Now, I just need to do a few last tweaks, and it'll be ready to print and distribute. Thanks for all the help. So cynical. No, no. I can take care of all that with the few traders I know. What makes you think I'd force you to handle something so dangerous? Now you should just lie back and bask in the praise for helping with the book. Oh, it's great! Why, with the information here, we'll save hundreds of lives, maybe even thousands. I'll share these with the traders, and soon everyone will know about the Wasteland Survival Guide. But first, here, the very first copy of our book goes to you. I couldn't have done it without you, my Wasteland Survival Expert. Sorry, I'm closed. Uh, come back tomorrow and we'll talk. See ya. Long time no see. What's... Lock and load, they'll be here any second. <laughs> Hang tight, there's always a second wave. Takes care of that.
Whew. Say, you're pretty decent in a firefight. Well, with what I do for a living, you need to be. Sorry, I'm being a complete asshole. I'm Sydney. It's good to meet a fellow relic hunter. Come on. You and I both know this is where the Declaration of Independence is stashed. No need to be coy about it. Good old Abraham Washington sent you on the same suicide mission he sent me on. The only problem is, you're not going to get it without my help. Simple. We pool our resources, grab the Declaration, then make for Rivet City and split the reward. I've studied the plans of this place, so without me, you're going to go in circles. What do you say? Smart move. Okay, the Declaration is secured in the Archive's strong room underground. There's a concealed cargo lift right here in the center of the rotunda. I've spent a few days hacking the lock with my remote terminal. When you're ready, punch in the password, let's get going. Ha! <laughs> I'm surprised that you care. Usually everyone looks out for themselves nowadays. What is it you want to know? I don't know. I grew up like pretty much every other girl in this crappy world. Spent most of my life just trying to keep away from slavers. One day out in the wastes, I stumbled across some poor bastard's body. On the body, I found info leading to some famous document. I had heard that Abraham Washington was looking for these scraps of paper. So I went after the thing. Turned out to be the Constitution. After he loaded me up with caps, I got pissed drunk, got laid, and was happy for the first time in a while. I haven't looked back since. Okay. Come on. Less gawking and more walking. What's up? It's only a scratch. I'll be fine. Thanks. I'll use it right away. Address you a message of utmost urgency. We kept the declaration in the archive strong room. It's at the end Men, of the east wing here. We can't let we'll have the to make it. There's all sorts of shortcuts through us. maintenance doors and utility gates to bypass security. If you can get through.
get him. Keep firing. What's up? Yeah, they got me pretty good. Thanks. Keep your eye. What's up? Yep, don't go too far. Cannot allow the enemy to penetrate our defenses any deeper. Oh! Defenses, evaded our best soldiers, and you've raided my home. But I have not yet begun to fight. I cannot allow you to steal our freedom. The Declaration must remain here. It is our symbol of hope, the one thing that cries out we are a free nation. Then my reputation precedes me. Good. That should make you well aware that I am not to be trifled with, and that my loyalty to the States is legendary. I know your fighting prowess far exceeds my own, but I will still duel you to the death if I must. What will it be, then? Rapiers? Pistols at dawn? Out with it! This is no mere document, sir. This is the doctrine laid down by my fellow members of the Second Continental Congress. It absolves us of the tyranny of King George III of Great Britain. It is perhaps the greatest symbol of this free nation. Petty lies and deceit may be the way of Great Britain's crown, but I will not succumb to such tomfoolery. Since it appears you wish to resolve this without bloodshed, May I suggest you stand down and surrender? I can promise that you will be treated well, in a manner accustomed to any member of the Royal Army. Please explain, but I warn you, I am well versed on the tactics of the underhanded Redcoat spy. You do well to remember that. Saints alive! It is both an honor and a privilege, sir. I was hoping this day would arrive. I hope these fortifications are up to your high standards, sir. All of my men await your command to push and retake the capital. May I ask where you intend to bring the document? A new president? So the stars and stripes truly are forever. All hail the red, white, and blue. Does... does this mean the war is over? Have we won? It's over? Amen to that. Then I suppose my posting here at the fort is complete. I think you said it best when you said, We in America do not have government by the majority. We have government by the majority who participate. It has been both an honor and a privilege to serve in the Army of the United States. What are your final orders?
Coming from you, that means all the world to me. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve my country. It's time for me to take a long-needed rest. I think you'll find that the rest of my men are long due for the same. I hereby relinquish command and control of this fortification to you. Good luck to you, Mr. Jefferson. And give Sally my regards.
Keep it moving. I got a whole bottle of whiskey with my name on it. What's up? Let's get the hell out of here. Time to get paid and get drunk. There should be an elevator to the upper levels somewhere around here. Rivet City, here we come. I can't wait to add the declaration to the Society's collection. Oh my! I never expected anyone to find this! I didn't even know it was still intact! Well, certainly a reward is in order for your efforts. How about 100 caps? Thank you very much. Oh, my lord, I never expect... I mean, I'm utterly shocked. You two have earned your places in the annals of American history. Yes, indeed. You will be remembered for this great day. I will award Sydney's promised bounty to her personally. No need to worry yourself about that. Enjoy your reward, my friend. You've earned it. Good to see you. What's up? Huh. I'm so. What is it you want to know? Yeah. It is nice. I don't even sleep without it under my pillow. My father made gun ammunition for a living. Taught me everything about how firearms work. So, I've spent my downtime tinkering with guns like my 10mm Ultra SMG here. It's like a hobby, I guess. Okay. You know, I think I've had my fill of wasteland roaming and picking through ruined buildings for a while. I'm just gonna kick back and spend my caps. But thanks for asking. Well, now that we brought back the declaration, I think I'll take my cut of the earnings and head out to get drunk. Look me up in the underworld if you ever need me. I usually hang there since ghouls don't hit on me all the time. Yeah, see you. Hey.
Yes. Give me a second. Keep your panties on. Hey. Things are going well for you today, sir. Hey there. Good. This better be important. That damn Roy Phillips won't take no for an answer. Keep showing up, looking for a handout. Keenest kind aren't wanted. End of story. If I were a betting man, I'd place a stack of caps on him trying something violent soon. And that would make Tenpenny nervous. I don't like it when Tenpenny gets nervous. But I can't spare the manpower to go hunt down Roy Phillips and his band of misfits, or I'd gladly end this thing once and for all. You serious? You don't know what a ghoul is? A goddamn disaster waiting to happen, that's what they are. Sure, maybe you can get over the fact that they look like someone took a cheese grater to their face. But it's what you don't see that's the problem. The radiation slowly eats away their brain. Then they go zombie on you. It's better for everyone to kill them before all that, if you ask me. Really? You? You're welcome to give it a try. But don't come crying to me when you get hurt. They've holed up in the nearby metro tunnels. They're living with packs of feral ghouls. Be careful. Roy seems damn close to turning zombie himself. I suppose you won't be doing this out of the kindness of your heart, hmm? How's 500 bottle caps sound? Payable upon termination of that damn ghoul, Roy Phillips, and all his followers. Well, maybe you're right. It was something I was going to have to do eventually anyway. How about another 200 caps? And here, you can take this rifle and ammo. But you better not screw this up. Roy Phillips and his gang are somewhere in Warrington Station Metro Tunnels. They've barred the main entrance. Try going through the train yard. It's dark in those tunnels. Shoot first and ask questions later.
You there! Put your weapons away! Come over here! No funny business, unless you want to get shot. What are you doing here? It's not safe for your kind around here. Oh yeah? Is he expecting you? Well then, run along. It's not wise to keep Roy waiting. There's a bit of a temper, that one. You watch yourself. I've been stomping around with Roy and his gang of misfits. Roy's a no-nonsense, take-no-prisoners kind of guy. He heard about this Tenpenny asshole, and now he's trying to get us in that tower. He's hatching some kind of plan to kill all those bigot bastards. Believe it or not, I used to vacation there. Good luck. What's the big idea? What do you want? Biding our time, making plans, getting ready. Tenpenny and his pack of elitist wannabes can't keep us out of that tower forever. We've got rights, and we'll take them if they aren't given to us. Not sure where you come from, kid, but out here in the wasteland everything's up for grabs. And you only get to keep what you can hold on to. Tenpenny didn't build that tower. He found it and took it from whoever used to own it. Now we're gonna take it from him. We tried playing nice, but they shot at us. Fuck them. It's time for them and their bigot ways to die. If I'm no better than Tenpenny, then he should let me into that tower. But he won't, so I'm busting in. I already got a plan. They think I'm a monster? I'll show them the real monsters. We'll unleash our feral brethren on them. All those bigoted sons of bitches will get torn apart. Trouble is getting past the damn subway access door. You see this? Some kind of escape door that leads from the Tenpenny basement to the subway tunnels. There must be some way to get that open. If I'm no better... We'll... What do you want? You better choose your next words really carefully, cause you're starting to piss me off. You got balls. Really big ones. I'll assume you're kidding cause no one shit talks me and lives. We ghouls are just like the rest of you. Shit out of luck and doing our best to make it. Is that so? He isn't man enough to do it himself? Sends a boy to do his dirty work. You think you got what it takes? Yeah. Fuck you! Welcome back to the...
Give me a second. Keep your panties on. Huh. Didn't think you had it in you. Guess you proved me wrong. Good job. Knowing those ghouls are gone takes a load off my mind. Thanks. You'll be wanting the reward now, won't you? I suppose you've earned it. There's your caps. Contract fulfilled, debt paid. This don't mean we're buddies, all right? Now get going. Watch yourself.
okay? You all right? About time you woke up. I was starting to think maybe they'd fried your brains or something. You got a headache, right? Don't worry. That'll get better. I don't know if it'll matter, but it'll get better. They must really like you. At least they let me keep my clothes. Looks like they stripped you of everything. Yeah? Well, then wake the hell up, because I'm tired of being stuck in it. Sorry, kid, but this is really happening. You're stuck here just like me. I've been here for a little while, but haven't found a way to... Shit. You hear that? It's coming again. Get back against the wall now. I'm thinking maybe now you can understand it's a good idea to get the hell out of here? What? You've never seen a giant metal claw scoop somebody up and carry them off to who knows where? I don't know where they're taking him, and I'm not interested in staying here long enough to find out. We gotta get out of here, kid. Now! Now you're talking. I can tell you, there ain't an easy way out of here. I've looked around, I can't find any panels, wires, circuits, nothing. I'm thinking they did us a favor putting us together in here like this. And I say we use it to our advantage. And for the record, the name's Soma. Nice to meet you. They're keeping an eye on us, you know. Watching us. So I say we give them a little show. Give them a reason to pay a little extra attention to us. They want us alive for something. Who knows what. Point is, if it looks like one of us is going to kill the other, they'll step in to stop it. So that's what we do. We throw a few punches, make it look real, and then jump them when they come in to break it up. Hell if I know, but at least it's a start. It's better than sitting here waiting for them to experiment on us even more. All right, good boy. Now let's not get too rough here, okay? Gotta make it look good, but don't want to do any serious damage. All right, I'll hold back on you. Make sure you don't get too roughed up, okay? And you be ready. Soon as they come in to get us, you take them down. Hit me! Come on, hit me! They send more after us. None of it is real. It can't hurt me if it's not real. I'll wake up any minute now. I just need to wake up.
me out of here? What the hell is this thing? What are we supposed to do with it? Escaping? Do you want to see the rest of this place? I've seen a bunch. I can show you if you want. Great! Oh, great. Well, so much for that idea. She suckered you good, huh? See? I told you I could help. Sure. I love exploring, and it's been a while since I've been out and about. We'll have to be careful, because they'll be mad that we're out. But it's okay. I know how to get through the steamworks. We need to get to the big engine room, so I can show you the rest of the ship. Let's go. Oh, I've been here a while. A long while. Sometimes, I can sneak out of my cell and go explore. I've seen a bunch of the ship. It's pretty neat. But they always catch me and put me back here. I'll stay right with you. Listen, I know how this shit works. We all go together, and we all get wiped out at the same time. No offense, but I'm gonna hang back for a bit. You need someone to keep an eye out behind you anyway. Don't worry, I'll catch up with you soon enough. I guess they're already looking for us. I can sneak past them in the vents, but you're too big to fit. We'll have to figure out how to get around. Wow, really? I get to use a grenade? Neat! Cool. Give me just a second to get behind them.
I'll stay here until it's safe. Okay, I'll show you what I found. If you want to get out of here, I think it'll help. Come on, follow me. Aw, oh, nuts. They turned it off! Last time I was here, I used this to get to the top of the ship. It's kind of like an elevator, only it doesn't just go up and down. It feels sort of tingly, too. They must be pretty angry that we're exploring. Oh, I know! Come on, I know another way up. So, this is it. Pretty neat, huh? I've never had the courage to wake them up, but I think you're going to need to. The spaceman has a suit, and we need him to use it. This is going to be so neat! Astronaut. Those freezers are so dangerous. Sometimes people don't wake up. I guess you better take his suit. You're going to have to go if he can't. But first, you have to get to the door to the outside. They'll be waiting for you. But you can suck out all the air and part of the ship so they won't get in your way. They have these generator things that power parts of the ship and make sure it has air. You'll have to turn some of them off. There's one in the cryo lab, one in the hangar bay, and one where they make the robots, the robot assembly area. Once they're all broken, you can get through that door to the outside. And then, once you get to the top of the ship, you can turn the teleporter thing back on, and I can catch up to you. I guess it's time for me to get those doors unlocked for you now. <laughs> this is fun! Don't go alone. Those generators are in scary places. Take one of the grown-ups with you. Where are they? Where are the little buggers? Aliens? That what you call them? So you woke me, huh? Who the hell are you? Do I really look that stupid, kid? This ain't a ship. I don't hear water, and I sure as hell don't feel us rocking. So tell me another one. Besides, you don't look trapped to me. How do I know you ain't working with those little green bastards? The only teams I know are cattle and they get led to the slaughter. That's why I work alone, kid. Now, you did let me out of that... thing, so it counts for something. Tell you what, I usually ride solo, but I'll stick with you for now. You try and pull anything stupid, and I'll bury you. Can you tell me how it all ends up? You know. Speak your peace. Well, now you're speaking my language. 
Hell yeah, I'll come with you. Fine. It's all gone, Tikorian. Doesn't matter who won or who started. generator room. Just hold on to him and try to negotiate. Y you know, like a hostage. And how are we supposed to do that? We can't understand what the hell they're saying. I don't know. But maybe we should... There must be something. No sense discussing it now. Hang on a tick. I don't know anything about anything in this section, so I'm heading back to the engine core.
one more of those damn generators to go, and we can get the hell out of here. Yeah! Only one more of those generators is all you need to take care of, and we can get to the bridge and kick some alien butt! It's a pretty big place, and I've only seen some of it. They always catch me before I see the whole thing. I've seen the cryo lab. That's where they freeze people and cut them up and stuff. And the hangar. And the... But the real important stuff... Don't worry, I'll be safe with these guys.
Wow, you did it! Now you're gonna have to go outside of the ship. I know it looks scary, but that's the only way to the top. Oh, make sure you wear a spacesuit before you go out there, or you could die. Don't forget!
didn't think I'd ever see something like this. Not really the time for gawking. Sorry, I should get the door. Hang on, okay? Did you see that? Scary, but also kind of a stupid move on their part, don't you think? Pretty obvious, wasn't it? They're putting on a big show trying to scare us. It means we're getting under their skin. That's a good thing. Of course, now it looks like we've got a big death ray thing we need to take down before they blow up the whole damn planet. But it's nice to know we're having an effect, don't you think? sure where to go, but I think if we keep going this way, we'll find what we're looking for.
Stella Skyfire reporting for duty. She's Captain Cosmo's second in command, at least for the first few episodes. I think I have that ship targeted, but you'll have to find the firing control. They're dropping shields to prepare for a big shot. I'm cracking you down! Sapped out power. Look around for some buttons or something to restart the generator. Looks like it's working. Keep up with it. End of the room! Good to see you again. Hey, I thought you should know, someone must have hit a button during the fight just now. If I understood the display correctly, I think we sort of launched a homing beacon of some kind down to the surface. Landed just outside DC. I wouldn't mention it, except that I think, like I said, I'm not sure. I think it's a way to get back to Earth. Seems like there's a teleporter in the captain's quarters. I mean, I guess they're your quarters now. So I, I guess you can go home if you want. Oh, don't worry, I I'll stick around up here and keep an eye on things. better than Captain Cosmos! I know. And you're very welcome. I think I'm gonna stay here for a while. I don't think I like it much down there anymore. And there's still a bunch of the ship I haven't seen. I'll tell you what, if I find anything really neat, I'll bring it to you. Okay? I'll keep an eye on the ship for you. Home, Captain. 
I don't even want to know what it's like down there. Automated distress message from Vault Tech. Vault 101. Message begins. It feels like you left home a long time ago, but I know you're still out there. I just hope you're still alive to hear this. Things got worse after you left. My father's gone mad with power. If you can hear this, please stop looking for your dad and help stop mine. I changed the door password to my name. If you're hearing this, and if you still care enough to help me, you should remember it. Message repeat. This is an automated distress message from... Stop right there. I don't know how you got in here, but... Hold on. Wait a minute. It's you! I hardly recognized you with all the dust and grime from out there. Guess that explains how you got that door open. You've got more experience with it than most everyone down here combined. Amada's message. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'd keep that under your hat for her sake. She could get in real trouble if people found out she sent you a message. So could I, just for talking with you now. Technically, this means I'm supposed to report her. To tell the truth, I'm supposed to report you being here, too. But I've been getting mighty forgetful in my old age, you know? We've got more than enough trouble without me adding to it. Let me bring you up to speed. It seems like it's been a mighty long time. The night you and your dad left, everything went crazy. 
Between the bugs and the confusion, we lost a lot of people. When your dad opened up that gate, he let loose a whole lot of crap, if you'll pardon my language. I'm... I'm sorry to hear that. Regardless of how things turned out down here, he was a good friend. I always figured he'd do well outside. Matter of fact, a lot of folks started thinking he had the right idea. He usually did. So, if it was safe out there, why stay down here forever? Well, the Overseer didn't like that one bit and started cracking down on that sort of thought. Guess he didn't plan on you coming back. I probably ought to put you under arrest and take you into the Overseer, but frankly, I know better than to try that. Meanwhile, some of your old friends think opening the vault is a good idea. I bet those rebels would like a word with you. Now more than ever. Of course, if you want, you can just walk away as if you were never here. Out of respect for your dad, I won't even tell anyone I saw you. I guess you've had a lot on your mind since you were here last. Where do you want to go? Okay, follow me. Wait here. This doesn't look good. You know I can't do that, Freddy. Now get back down below before I have to do something we'll both regret. What? You're gonna lock me up like you did to Brotch? You can't cage a tunnel snake, man, because we rule! Stay back! Holy crap! Don't you know enough to stay away? I didn't mean to fire. I really didn't. I just wanted to scare him off, but he had a knife. I can't be too careful with those rebels. I lost my poor wife Agnes is what happened, and all the chaos and fighting, her old ticker just couldn't take it anymore. I tell you, I'm scared of them. I never know when they're going to try something dangerous. Yes, you do. You're crazy. Cut it out! I really shouldn't be seen to... As chance would have it, she was one of the first people to talk about life outside the vault after you left. No surprise. She always did like you. I hope you can talk some sense into her. Or maybe the two of you can come up with some other plan. Just be careful about it. You never should have left, kid. Now we'll make sure nobody ever leaves again. I never thought you'd be back. It's been a while, kid. I guess the goat couldn't have predicted how you'd turn out, could it? 
Remind me to add a question about rescuing your teacher from the vault jail. If the vault ever goes back to normal, that is. By the way, while I was in there, I heard some worrying things from the guards. I heard one of the guards talking about some sort of plan to raid Amada and the rest of us. I didn't hear anything else, but I think he read it on the security terminal. So maybe you can find more there. I'm sure it's bad news for us all. Most of them are just kids who are caught up in the idea of seeing the world. But I know we've got to actually open the vault if we want to survive. Otherwise, we're just going to dwindle away down here until it's all too late. It was pretty rough, I'll tell you. I know a lot of folks blame your dad. But I know he didn't mean to cause all that. Don't blame him or yourself. Watch yourself down here. Well, I see you've returned. Done with the dust and ruins of the wasteland, are you? Given up looking for Daddy? Thought you could just slink back in like a teen missing curfew? Well, that's too bad. You have no future in this vault. You're tainted. That would be where you're wrong, young man. By locking down this vault, I'm protecting its future. In fact, I was protecting its future when I had to make those unpleasant choices the night you and your father abandoned us. I only wish I could have stopped your father before he left. If anyone's to blame for the unpleasantness, it's him. Spoken like someone who's never had to make difficult decisions. Like someone who's never had to lead. Jonas was leaving with your father. Their departure would lead to others leaving as well. And before you know it, half of the vault would be gone. And then, our home, the last safe, pure bastion of humanity, would be reduced to a lonely handful of aging holdouts, too few to continue. And what makes you so certain about that? I can't imagine you're still so naive after spending time in that hell outside. None of them know what the outside is like and most of them would die out there. Then the rest of us inside would eventually die out too. I won't risk all of our lives just for a few people's passing fancy of taking a wasteland vacation. I hope you can understand that. To fix what you started? Go ahead and humor me. Oh, do you? What makes you think you know how better to protect this vault? I admit, in the 200 years since the war, our numbers have dwindled a little. But we have enough genetic diversity for a few more generations. My god, you're right. We won't last another hundred years whether or not we get supplies from the outside. We're the last bastion of pure humanity, and we're doomed. And you expect me to believe that the only way to do that is to let them travel out in the wastes and mingle with those savages? I suppose it would allow them to stay alive, and we could still keep the vault as our safe haven. But it'd require a new type of leader. And I know only one person with the proper attitude to do that. I'll inform my daughter Amata that she is the new overseer. Effective immediately.
Why don't you look where you're going? Hey, what's the word? The damn goat said I'm supposed to be a hairdresser, but that ain't me. I'm a barber, you got that? There's a difference. I'll start a gang, of course. Why, it'll be the toughest, coolest, badassest gang the Wasteland's ever seen. Hey, play your cards right, maybe I'll even let you join it, huh? Yeah, but I'm thinking it'll be a new gang. We ain't gonna just be in tunnels, you know. Besides, there's gonna be a lot more people who want to join. Competition's gonna be tough. Look, I know I've been kind of a jerk, but I don't deserve to be stuck down here forever. Not when I could have a real life up there like you. I mean, you're kind of a jerk sometimes, and you make it work up there, so why not me? Just make it so we can leave the vault, and I can go out there for my new life. Heck! Maybe we could form a gang, huh? Whatever. Lives have been lost. But perhaps worse than that, lives have been stopped. And in my attempts to keep you safe, I have kept you from growing up. I know I have made these mistakes, and I would make them again if I had to do so. That is why I cannot remain your overseer. Father! Amata, I appoint you overseer in my place. You've proven you have what it takes to make hard choices for the good of the vaults. I'm just sorry I didn't understand that earlier. Consider it one of many mistakes I've made. Thank you, Father. I'll do my best to keep us all safe inside the vault and beyond. You're welcome, my dear. And now, if you'll excuse me, I feel quite worn down. We'll deal with the details soon, in private. Until then, I'm sure there are people waiting to congratulate you. Hello. Why won't you just- I- I just heard. My father says he's stepping down as overseer. He won't tell me why, but I have to assume it's something you said to him. It's- Hard to forgive what he's done, but I suppose I can understand why he did it. I'm glad you brought him to his senses. But now there's a new overseer in charge, and I'm planning on opening the vault. This time for good. It's a bright new day for the vault, but I'm afraid there's one thing that has to change. There are still so many things to repair, and a lot of bad feelings to mend. Some people still blame you for what happened. So... I have to ask you to leave. I'm sorry, but the situation is just too delicate for you to stay. Please, if you really want to help the vault, you have to go. No, it's not like that. But if you stay, it'll just keep causing more problems. The vault can't take any more infighting. It's just what has to be. It'll be a while before we're ready to really go outside. But once the vault is stable again, maybe we'll see you out there. So, I guess this is goodbye for now. It's not much, but take this with you to remember us by. With luck, we'll meet again. Just leave us alone! You've done enough damage! I never thought you'd be back. You don't belong here anymore. Thank you.
Good riddance. Get out. This is Three Dog! Ow! And you're listening to Galaxy You want to go to Big Town? Of course you do! All right, yeah! Big Town, here we come! Lost. Are you lost? I know. Let's make up a story to pass the time. Once upon a time, there was this dog. His name was Joking Joe. And he went all around making everyone laugh. Help me! Frank! Oh! Takes care of that. And one day, a spaceship from outer space. Space landed right in front of him, and a big green alien jumped out and started eating people. And was our brave hero scared? No, not at all. He left in the face of danger. Ha ha ha! He beat up the monster, and everyone cheered. The end. That's all. For you. There it 
is. We're almost there. Come on. Yippee! Hey, who are you? Right. What do you want? Well, you can never be too careful. Be warned, it's not safe here. Super mutants have attacked recently and carried off some of our friends. Come in, just don't cause any trouble, okay? Hey, look at me. I'm in Big Town. Where's Red? Welcome to Big Town. Not that there's much of a town left. Those super mutants keep kidnapping people. I thought growing up was a good thing. You got to leave and explore the real world. Well, nobody tells you that the real world sucks. At first, we just paid the slavers to leave us alone. When we ran out of money, Red found other ways to convince them to leave us alone. But now she and the others are gone. Super mutants attacked and carried them off. No one knows when they're coming back, or who will be next. They took them to the north, to the police station or something. Do you think you could find them and rescue them? Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. We don't have much, but if you can bring them back alive, we'll give you everything we can. I'm so tired of being frightened all the time.
What? Who? Y you mean, are you for real? I'm safe? I, I need to get out of here. Here, take these supplies. It's all I have, but they'll only slow me down. You're right. I'll try to make it on my own. If I'm careful, I should be okay.
Thanks. Who are you? Never mind, I don't care right now. Let's go get Red and get out of here. You lead, I'll follow. Let's go. Move it. All right, move it. I'm not waiting here for long. No more talking. Let's get out of here. Right. Let's go. Now let's get the hell out of here. You're rescuing Shorty and me? Thanks. I thought we were goners for sure. I think the others are dead. Or worse. That's right. His birthday was recently. Did he make it to Big Town already? Oh, I can't wait to see him. Everyone else is dead or taken away to who knows where. Oh, let's hurry back to Big Town. Hey there, are you hurt? Alright, welcome back. You didn't listen to me. What? You are Don't hero I count returns. for something? He rescued me at least. Whew, I'm glad to be safely back home. Right, of course. Rescuing me was a job to you, and you're a real professional. Well, here you go. I wish I had more I could give you. Well, I guess you can have this. It's the money I was saving to buy medicine for the town's people. I know you've already risked your life once already, but I heard the mutants talking about another attack. 
They'll probably be here soon. Really? Th that's great! I'll let everyone know. You're a real hero, you know that? Thanks for helping us. I just hope we can survive another attack. Probably won't. Two very angry types of movements. Slow, lumbering, powerful movements, and jerky, erratic, excitable movements, both coming for the kill. There was a super mutant attack recently, and where there's one big ugly, there are ten more just waiting to grab you by the throat. Then the slavers will come and pick off what's left of your carcass and drag any survivors to Paradise Falls. Nearby, slavers move quick and come from all directions. Someone else might know where they nest. Skulk up toward Germantown, near the police station. They always come from that direction. There isn't anything here that hasn't been destroyed or dragged away. You're better off scavenging the dead out in the wasteland. Yeah, see ya.
my, my, you certainly do look a little bit worn out from your travels. Oh, just look at my terrible manners. I'm Agatha. It's so nice to meet you. Now, what brings you all the way out here? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm just fine out here. My husband, rest his poor soul, saw to it that our house was well protected from the elements and the inhabitants of the wastes. Apart from supply caravans, you're the first person to set foot inside my house in a long time. It's not for lack of trying at this point, mind you. I'm just far off the beaten path. Living in this isolation protects me, but it has also made me very lonely. Oh, oh goodness, no. I have a supply caravan that passes here maybe once a week. I trade with him for whatever I need, and I stock up enough till they return. Well, I always have my husband's old radio set to fall back on. I used it once, in an emergency, when a group of raiders was getting a bit too close for comfort to my house. Otherwise, I use it to broadcast my so-called music I play for my homemade violin. Oh, you are a clever one. Yes, that's exactly the problem that I have with it. It doesn't quite play all of the notes correctly, and I have to constantly tinker with it. But now that you mention it, um, yes, there is. My trading depends on my violin. Without it, I have nothing to play, no way to make music. If you can bring me a violin, a better one, I'd feel much more secure. Yes, very sad, isn't it? Sad to think that no more musical instruments will ever be made the old way ever again. <sighs> well, fortunately, I know where perhaps the last real violin in the world exists. If you give me your word that you will recover it, I will tell you more. Oh my, I didn't know I still had the looks. <laughs> well, you just made my day, you sweet thing. Let me give you something extra to help you on your way. I have a small amount of ammunition that my husband left behind. A box of odds and ends. I don't think I've opened it in years. If you do this for me, you're welcome to take whatever you need. Oh, I don't think I've been this happy in years. As promised, here's the key to the ammunition box. It's right under the radio table. Before you leave, I have some information that may help you, at least a place to begin. It all starts with my great-great-grandmother Hilda back in 2077, before the bombs fell. Of a kind, yes. Hilda sent a good deal of letters to my great-grandmother Mary, who passed them on, and so forth. I suppose the correspondence could be considered a diary of sorts. It certainly is a long time. That precious instrument has been through a lot. Anyway, Hilda was quite a special woman, classically trained and exceptionally talented at the violin. Her pride and joy was her Stradivarius violin. I can only imagine how exquisite this instrument must have been. When the war reared its head, she was invited by Vault Tech into Vault 92. They claimed the vault would be dedicated to preserving musical talent. Vault Tech was always promoting the vaults being used for the preservation of the arts and all that nonsense. Hilda couldn't pass on a chance to meet many of the other musical talents of the world, so she accepted their invitation. Then the bombs fell, the vault was sealed, and my family never heard from her again. She kept it in a special pressurized case. Inside the case is the perfect temperature and humidity for the instrument. If the case is still functioning, the Stradivarius would be in perfect shape. Hilda Stradivarius was named the Swa Stradivarius. All of them had names. That's what I want you to get. 
That's the catch. I have no idea where it is. I'd suggest making our way to Vault Tech headquarters in the D.C. ruins. That would be a good place to begin. Good luck! Oh, my goodness! I must see it, please! Oh, my! It's more beautiful than I could have ever imagined. I can't thank you enough. I wish I had something to give you, a more suitable reward for all your efforts. All I can give you is the frequency to my radio set. Tune in whenever you feel like listening to the strains of an old woman's violin playing. I'm saying is, the longer we sit here, the more time they have to shore up their defenses. We should hit them sooner rather than later. We barely have the manpower to keep the Citadel fortified. We've been over this before, Sarah. So we just wait until they decide we're next on the list? If the Pride goes in now, we might have a chance. And if you fail, then what? The risk is not worth the reward. I agree. Without the Gek, the Purifier is useless to the Enclave anyway. They may give up before long. I don't like it. You don't have to like it, Sarah. You just have to follow orders. Yes, Father. So, you're back. We had feared both you and the Gek were lost. Were you successful? You think I am unaware? We've watched the build-up around the facility for the last week. Has something new happened? Then we must go at once. If you have any other information, tell me now before we mobilize. Any help you can give might save lives. Well, that gives us a little more time. But how long do we have before they figure it out? This makes this situation far more dire. If the Enclave has the Gek, there's nothing stopping them from starting the Purifier. They'll figure out the code eventually. I'm afraid you're right. We need to act now while we can. Send the Pride in. We can do it. We can win this. All right, Sarah. The Pride goes in. But I want them to have some extra firepower. Rothschild, is it ready? What? No, I, I mean, Lee and I have solved the power problems, but we've only barely finished diagnostic tests. So? It's not ready for field tests, let alone live fire situations. The weapons haven't been calibrated, the navigation detection system is offline. Rothschild enough. Can you make it work? Honestly? I don't know. I think we can scrape by, and I suppose if we can't, it won't matter in the long run anyway. Then it's decided. Sarah, you take the pride and use the robot as support. Take our friend here and secure that purifier. Yes, sir. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that my father and I have been talking. The Pride and I have decided that after all you've survived, 
You've done enough to be an honorary member of Lion's Pride. So congratulations. Membership comes with some privileges, including our power armor. You want the full suit or the recon armor? All right, here you go. I hope it fits. So you think you can handle this? Me too. If you need a minute to collect yourself, now's the time to do it. Okay, don't be nervous. You'll have the whole pride backing you up, not to mention this giant tin can. Just stay safe until we reach the purifier. You're no good to us if you're dead. And don't let that thing step on you. Okay, we're going to go over it one more time. The pride is on me. The goal is Project Purity, but we can't get into the facility with those energy fields up. Rothschild and Lee say this robot should be able to take down the energy fields. So we're on fire support. We stay close to the thing, keep it clear, and get it to where it needs to go. Once the fields are down, we head straight for the facility. We'll use the robot to keep them occupied while we get inside and secure the control room. We need to move quickly before we lose the chance to surprise them. Get whatever supplies you don't already have, and we'll meet in the Bailey. When we're done with this, everyone can have a nice cold glass of water on me. Let's move. All right, Rothschild, fire it up. Pride, move out!
red candy of victory. Impossible. Communist engage. You again. I can't say I'm surprised. You and your ilk seem hell-bent on destroying everything our government has worked to achieve. There's nothing to stop me from killing you this time. Let's end this. I beg to differ. The Enclave is at the height of its power. Once this facility is operational, the masses will flock to the Enclave for fresh water, protection, and a plan for the future. The American people are worth fighting for. The future must be secured. I won't let you stand in the way of that. And what would you have me do? Let you have everything I've worked to build? Let you destroy it all? And you? You would just let me leave? How can I be sure you won't just shoot me once I turn my back on you? I suppose it doesn't matter much now. Very well. I shall leave you to your fate. You're just gonna let him leave like that? I'll go along with it, but I don't like it. Let's get this room secured and we'll call in the team. Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Dr. Lee? It's Sarah Lyons. I'm in the control room. Please, We're both here. What's going on? I've been monitoring the equipment remotely and we have a serious problem. The facility has been damaged during the fighting. Some of it looks accidental, some of it may have been sabotage. There's pressure building up in the holding tanks. It needs to be released now, or else the whole facility could explode. To release the pressure, you're going to have to turn the purifier on. Do you understand me? It has to be turned on now! If I'm reading this right, I'm afraid there are lethal levels of radiation inside the chamber. I'm sorry. I wish there was some other way, but there's just no time. It has to be done now, or the damage will be catastrophic. Well, so much for celebrating. One of us is going to have to go in there and turn the damn thing on. And whoever does it isn't coming back out. Not exactly how I imagined going out, you know? 
So, what should we do? Draw straws? I wish that were true. Really, I do. But you heard Dr. Lee. We have to do this right now. Or who knows how bad it'll be. One of us has to go in there. You're going to have to be quick about it. If the radiation is bad enough, you won't have much time. I won't forget what you've done here. No one will. Thank you. And so it was that the Lone Wanderer ventured forth from Vault 101, intent on discovering the fate of a father who had once sacrificed the future of humanity for that of his only child. The Capital Wasteland proved a cruel, inhospitable place, but the Lone Wanderer refused to surrender to the vices that had claimed so many others. The values passed on from father to child. Selflessness, compassion, honor, guided this noble soul through countless trials and triumphs. But it was not until the end of this long road that the Lone Wanderer learned the true meaning of that greatest of virtues, sacrifice. Stepping into the irradiated control chamber of Project Purity, the child followed the example of the father, sacrificing life itself for the greater good of mankind. Thankfully, when selected by the sinister president to be his instrument of annihilation, the Wanderer refused. Humanity, with all its flaws, was deemed worthy of preservation. The waters of life flowed at last, free and pure for any and all. The capital wasteland, at long last, was saved. So ends the story of the Lone Wanderer, who stepped through the great door of Vault 101 and into the annals of legend. But the tale of humanity will never come to a close, for the struggle of survival is a war without end. And war... War never changes.